What's happening? This is the Opie and Anthony program on XM oh, Satellite Radio. Hello, exactly. Hello, exactly. Hello, exactly. It's the ONA virus spreading across America. Slowly but surely. I have a sneeze gearing up. Yeah. Won't, won't come out. Just sits there, kind of Very behind your light. eyeballs. Hate that. Just stare right at that light. Yeah. There ain't no light. No, that one. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you need like the sun. No, no. no. Get your Sunlight. face right up in it. Yeah. It's passed. It's gone now. No, just dip the the lamp toward your nose. Oh, uh, that's it. Yeah, you'll okay. sneeze like crazy. See a nice big bright spot until noon. Yeah. Burn out your retina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the retina tattoo. <laughs> we have so much to do today. So much to do. Oh no! You make it sound like work, and now I want to go home. 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 Mm. No, we we really have a lot to do. Yeah. Very important uh, news. Uh, Jen's lap dance. Jen and Vince Vaughn are an item, I guess, because the New York Post is telling us so. Wow. Hot kiss for new love. That's front page of the front post. Front page of the post. Slow news day. Ah, screw Saddam Hussein on trial. That seems to be his whole take on it, so why not the post? Screw Hurricane Wilma. One ah. of the most powerful storms ever. Ah, it ain't near us yet. Ah, who Just cares? Hit, hitting a few Mexicans right now. Who cares, right? <laughs> Bono meeting Bush. Ah, who cares? What could they possibly talk about? It's all about, uh, it's all about Jennifer Aniston and uh, Vince Vaughn. The love, big kiss. Love, 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 love that... Uh, that uh, song you do, that uh, that uh, one, that's a great song. <laughs> a song about freedom. Shut Al-Qaeda. up. Shut up. We've got to stay the course. Shut what, up. Bono, how did Bono yeah. not just punch him in the face? Streets have no name. Kind of like in like Iraq. Because yeah, <laughs> well, we blew them all up. We're trying to get him in there. You, Main Street, USA. That would be a good street in Baghdad. Shut up. We're gonna and play. how did Bush not punch Bono? <laughs> Both of them just duke it out oh, because yeah. they both, you know, you know, they both just hate each other and what each other stand for. Yeah, there's an opposite thing. Yeah, Bono doesn't there. have any sort of a god complex at this point, does he? No, not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I guess when you sell out like Giant Stadium 900 million times, yeah. you know, the only other rush you can get is to, like save the world. Save the world. That's what they. You know, you're absolutely right. That's kind of the next step. They're so bored. With what they've done their whole life, because they've reached the pinnacle. People like Madonna, same thing. Yeah, how many times can you be called a genius? Yeah. You are so, you know, you're the music, and you've, you've stayed you, over the years. You're able to adapt and stuff. Yeah, I'm Two marvelous. Two groupies blowing them, and he's like nodding off. Like, yeah. What, uh, <laughs> oh, what, what happened? How many how many blowjobs does this make, guys? Uh, we lost Count Bono. All right. You know, I really got to save the world or something. It's just super Bono with a cape. She just become a superhero. That's like Oprah. Left. Oprah's. She's trying to save the world now. Yeah, she's actually all trying. She's trying to fill the void of never having kids, and now she's trying to raise all of us. <laughs> raise raise everybody nation. else. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Oprah for president. God, that's so. Uh, yeah, she so talks accurate. about relationships. It's like you've never been married. Yeah. But I have a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm qualified. She's an expert. I'm a billionaire. <laughs> all right. Well, apparently people want to listen to people like that. They tune in and buy the books she rec- uh, requests. Take like her advice. Like she's reading all of them. I mean, every single one of those books she reads through. Do you think she's just laying in bed in this palatial bedroom, just thumbing? Hmm. She's not reading any of them. This is interesting. She's got an assistant that just gives her the cliff notes. She's got a room room full of college interns Yeah, that she pays no money, I bet. What's this book about? Oh, Oprah. It was very good. Okay. She's got a chart on the wall that says Oprah's sensibilities, and it has to hit like, you know, 8 out of of 10. (laughs) Got to hit the criteria. Checklist to move to like to the next level. (laughs) It's like, oh, good. Okay, I like that. To to recommend, how many books do you have to read to, to actually like recommend one? Like yeah. uh, to, to the whole country, you have to read like at least what eight to ten of them. She's holding up a three hundred page book every ten days. It's like three thousand pages, and she never gets a lemon. Where she comes on her show and goes, you know, I read ten books, and, and all of them stunk. Yeah. While starring and producing on my own show, running a magazine, right. and going to award shows, right. I'm reading three thousand pages, every and 10 they days. all stunk. So I can't recommend one this uh, this time around. No. All right. You want to hear some Bush clips with Bono? Oh, we got some? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we got a couple clips from uh, Bush you did, you meeting great Bono. Great job. Great job. We'll stay the course. Shut up. This, <laughs> let's uh, play the first one here. U2 frontman Bono stopped by the White House for lunch with President Bush. Hello. Hello. Bono and 
President Hello. Bush had lunch for nearly two hours in a private dining room off the Oval Office. White House Press Secretary Scott McClellan says they discussed debt relief, AIDS, malaria, and world trade. Malaria. Bono told Rolling Stone magazine before the meeting he wasn't afraid to meet the president or any world leader. He says they should be afraid to meet him because he represents the poor and he's throwing a punch. What? Bono's lunch with the president wasn't completely full of heavy issues. McClellan says the two also discussed rock and roll because you two are in Washington on tour. Margie Zarletta, Washington. He's absolutely not representing the poor. He represents the poor, I Bono. Went, I went to a U2 show recently. He's not representing the poor. No. We're getting poor by going to see U2. Ticket prices are outrageous. The poor. That is the most outrageous statement I've ever heard. He's not <laughs> that representing Bono represents the poor. The poor. Yeah. You know how much it costs to go to a U2 show these days? I know. When He's, was the last time he was poor? 1981? Yeah. Send Tippy Tom to the White House to talk to uh, Bush. That's a guy representing the, the poor. poor. That is the homeless guy. Send some homeless dude to the White House. I, c I couldn't represent the poor. I've been no. middle class my whole life. I don't know what it's like to be poor. Not poor. No. This guy's flying no. around in a private jet representing the poor all over the world. That's great. And talking about malaria? Like, what? He's the champion of malaria now, oh, yeah. too? What, what is that? Isn't that cured or something? I don't know. Who gets malaria? There's still an area that uh, gets malaria. They deserve it at this point. <laughs> I, know, exactly I mean, come what? on. Like, I mean... Some of these diseases, if they're still happening out there. And what's ah, Bush going to do about, like, mosquitoes? Right. And stuff. He's hey, gonna... President, we have to get rid of the fucking mosquitoes? The fucking mosquitoes? These are just photo I've got my, my plate's a little full, Bono. My like... plate's a little full right now. <laughs> I like how it, it just kind of, the whole conversation just ends to, into what the fuck they wanted to talk about anyways. Like, they start talking about rock and roll, and you know he showed them, like, where the red button was. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's where I, you know, if I got to launch a, a nuclear missile, I go here. Here's my hotline. Soviet Union used to used to give them a call if we had a problem. We send the groupies in. I don't. I get groupies too. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you think those meetings go down? They just uh, they're face to face and they nod a lot. And then Bono leaves, and then Bush just goes, next! Yeah. Like, is, is next anything guy? really accomplished by Bono Nothing. meeting the President of the United States? Well, at what Nothing. point did, like, these entertainers all of a sudden have this level of credibility? It's like, Ben Affleck to go to the Pentagon today and yeah, discuss right. the did Iraqi war. with Elvis and Nixon? Because I know Elvis and Nixon. Well, that was a biggie. What's going on? A mic is on somewhere? I don't know. I hear Steve. Oh, I hope Steve Let's talks. See what they're talking about. Okay, Steve, you think he's going to talk smack on us? I hope so. Uh, there's, uh, I don't know, maybe there's a wireless mic out there or something. It's weird. Anyway, why can we? Why can, Why are we hearing Steve's why are we hearing conversation? Steve's perfectly clear. Is there a wireless mic on out there? Is there wireless wireless mic? Steve, why were we hearing you? And what were you talking about? He's got a booming voice. So. No, it wasn't one of those like. Now look at Steve looking up at the ceiling, like looking for is a wire. Is it bugged? Is there a? There's the, the thing is on top of the ceiling. The um. What is smoke detector? The transmitter for the uh, for the wireless is on for top the of the wireless. Screen. But but was a mic on? If you guys heard me, probably. But <laughs> yeah, it was. What were you saying? Uh, there's an outside mic on. Oh, we were, I was just telling Eric that the uh, assault promos were uh, ah. on his console. Oh Very yeah. Good. Uh, we'll get into the assault on the media thing. Holy crap! We'll get into it. Yeah, it's someone... taken on a. a uh, a new level, I guess. Yeah, someone uh, actually started taking our advice and just carrying yeah. on a little conversation. Yeah, but first we want to finish this conversation. So you were talking about Nixon and... Uh... Yeah, Nixon and uh, Elvis. Right. I know. I don't know. I think it might have started there because Elvis uh, was invited to the White House by Richard Nixon. Yeah. Uh, it was part of Nixon's plan to help out getting the kids off drugs. This is just the <laughs> dumbest... Like, you think Bush is stupid? Boy, that helped. <laughs> You think Bush is stupid, like a lot of the stuff he does? Some of the older presidents, uh, some of the stuff they did was just ridiculously stupid. He thought Elvis would be a great way to get the kids. Like, that was Nixon's idea of who the kids enjoyed right. at that time, you know, late, uh, uh, early 70s around sure. there, was, was Elvis Presley. So he invites him in and actually makes him an honorary member of the DEA. Gave him a badge and everything where he had a, a, a drug enforcement agency badge, and Elvis would go around and make traffic stops. He would stop people and be like, you know, hi, I'm Elvis Presley. I'm a member of the DEA, you know, to drive safe. You know, people would freak out like, holy Give me shit. drugs. Elvis just, yeah, you got any <laughs> drugs on you? Because I really need some. <laughs> I'm hurting real bad. 
And uh, I need a man. <laughs> this doesn't look like Tylenol. <laughs> <laughs> what is this here? <laughs> and he was. Uh, that was like the, the. He was. I think he was like one of the first presidents to kind of use celebrity. Yeah. And then they all realized that celebrities were kind of the way to get to the American people. American people like celebrities. If I like that celebrity, put two and two together, then the people are going to like me. I think celebrities should just shut up and perform for us. Uh, you know. Well, a lot of them do, but uh, my a favorite few of thing. Them my no. favorite thing is when one of these high-profile movies come out. All of a sudden, the actor that's in the movie is now an expert on that topic. Oh, that! that Holy yeah. shit! That drives me. That started nuts. with kung fu. <laughs> David Carradine. David Carradine yeah. actually thought he was a kung he didn't know fu a goddamn expert. thing about it. He just he was had raised by those monks or whatever the hell they were. Yeah, he was a Shaolin. white man with squinty eyes, <laughs> and that's how he got the part. <laughs> right. And all of a sudden, he knows how to throw like. He a... was a Shaolin warrior. <laughs> oh yeah. But they, they're on all the news programs as an expert now on this topic, just because they're making a movie on this. Yeah. And then as soon as the movie uh, leaves the theaters, uh, they're not an expert on that anymore. They're now an expert on something new. Any of these actors or actresses, when when they're being interviewed on on uh, that topic, and they sit there and say, "Well." She's such a strong woman, and she has taught me so much. It's the character they're playing. Yeah. And they carry on as uh. if it's a completely real person. You know, I learned so much from her, and she's so much stronger than I am. And <laughs> yeah. You're playing the part. Shut up. Stop it. Oh, I oh, can't so want horrendous. to strangle the person more. Shut I up and tell us who you're fucking. That's yeah. all we care about. That's it. I, it's I, you. you know, I was glad the shoot was over because I just couldn't go to those emotional places. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it, was too, it was too yeah. painful. It's too painful for me. You know, there are some characters that I play that it takes me months to really get out of it and stop feeling that emotion uh, that uh, I was... Stop it. Stop it. Do you think for for a minute when I was working that I would leave a house and go... You know, for months I thought, I just hope the air's coming out cold enough out of that air conditioning system because I went in there and installed it and those people, it's a hot day and if they weren't feeling cool, that it's a job. You're playing a part. That's what your <laughs> job is, idiot. And sit there and dwell on the fact that I was a soldier and my friends died, man, and I felt the sorrow and yeah, yeah you did. I mean, sure you, know you did. There are a couple of actors out there who are just complete psychos, and I believe it, but they never say that shit. No, it's always like the cheese ball, like you know. Yeah, sure. Somebody in like Speed Part Two, literally. <laughs> Christian just, Slater yeah. or You're still something. Still obsessed or, with Speed Part Two. I know. Two. I just had to be in a boat for like <laughs> yeah, yeah, at some yeah. point during the day for the next three months. <laughs> I couldn't even go on a cruise, man. You know, afterwards, uh, after our wrap. Party. We uh, we were all gonna go on a cruise, and I couldn't do it because the boat hitting that land, <laughs> cutting it in half. Uh, I like when an actor like gains weight for a part, yeah, and they act like it's fucking amazing. Like you put on, <laughs> you put on twenty pounds for that role. It's like, dude, gaining weight is the easiest fucking thing to do. Everybody in America is doing it you right now. You eat shit food right. and you don't exercise. Probably the easiest thing you could do as a human. Yeah, just gain weight. Just gain yeah. weight. And then they always go anytime. I like when anytime. Uh, it's impressive when they go the other way, though. Like, the other way, yeah. Big like time. Christian Bale. And, Christian uh, Bale and the, the Machinist. Holy crap. Is oh. ridiculous. The guy looks like he weighs, I don't know, 90 pounds? Yeah, 100. I think we. it was like 100 and. Because uh, he's a big guy, too. He's not. pounds or something, but he's six something. Yeah, he's a big guy. And he yeah. got down to where he looked like a concentration camp. Uh, Oh survive. yeah, that, that was brutal. Unbelievable. But you were saying I. There's all that I shit like, or like when you know somebody pretty doesn't wear like any makeup, and they'll be like, "I was so courageous." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so brave. What movie was that? Goddamn. Oh, you know what it was? It was the Charlize Theron yeah, one. Yeah, She played the. Charlize. She played the. Uh, the oh, oh, the animal. Monster. Serial killer. Yeah, the serial yeah. killer. There. One of the worst movies I ever saw. They threw. You didn't like that one. No, you know, I, I, I liked it right in the beginning where the dude's trying to uh, kill her and she snaps and she fucking kills him. And yeah, right there, I'm about to give it a standing ovation. This is going to be the greatest fucking movie I've ever seen. Never seen the girl be the psycho serial killer. Right. Then all of a sudden, they started to, like, try to make excuses as to why she why was she killing was like these that? people. Yeah. And that it was, and all he had all, like, these cartoon character, like, mean chauvinistic guys. Like at right. one point she's a she's a fucking hooker, and somehow she, not only does she get an interview to be a lawyer, she gets in there with the head guy, gets right, past right, the secretary, right. and then it's just this 
And that would just be totally in real life, socially awkward. Like, uh, sweetie, uh, you haven't gone to law school, or anything? but no, not this guy. Yeah. He's like, let me tell you something, you dumb broad. Yeah. You ain't ever gonna be a fucking lawyer, cause I got a dick <laughs> and you got a cunt. So why don't you fucking let me stick it in your ass and then get yeah, out of this yeah. office, cause I'm a guy. <laughs> and and that's why you're killing people. It was oh, so man. It was so fucking irritating. It's like when you saw like uh, Dahmer. Did you ever see that? Yeah. At no point did they make any excuses as to why yeah. he 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 was to a try creep. Try to get some sympathy and that, for the that character. Yeah, right. it wasn't any point. Like you know, you know, my uncle shoved a tuna fish sandwich up my ass <laughs> when I was a kid, and that's ever since then I confused food with violence. Yeah. And then I feel bad for him. No, he was he was no. a maniac. God damn, that law office scene is so oh. perfect. Yeah, because any normal guy would be like, you know, your resume, you really don't have anything here. I'm um, sorry, you know, but they had to go the Lifetime movie route where any right. cuz any time you watch a movie on Lifetime, it's like that. An original Lifetime exclusive starring Marky Post and, and and she comes in and there's the caricature guys, you know, she'll always hook up with a guy that romances her and he's so nice and then either after they get married or decide to move in together, the guy turns into, you know, hey, get in the kitchen, you fucking whore, <laughs> yeah. punching her in the face, and she's got to, you know, pour kerosene on him while he's sleeping yeah. and strike that match. Exactly. Because <laughs> you know what it is well, with, with guys stuff? Our shit is so on the surface because we, uh -huh. we don't have, there's nothing subtle about us. Their stuff is all, like, you know, underground, and you can't yeah. see it. They're sitting there literally across from you in a restaurant knowing what buttons to push to dial in like 1-800 mind fuck in your head <laughs> and then then you lunge across the table with like a bread knife and then all of a sudden they just carry him on she just yeah. sits there all oh, you know i was sitting yeah here. life comes out of my crotch i'm i'm a daffodil <laughs> and you have like no and the dude's coming out no that bitch said you know and that's it the bouncer always goes right for the guy all right yeah. she's pushing the buttons like crazy that's that's very good oh yeah i'd be the worst bouncer ever hey, we got... I'd, I'd be like the reverse i'd be going up behind the women with like a chloroform rag yeah just knocking them yeah. out and dragging them <laughs> off. She goes, uh, the movie Monster, too. She's in the car with the friggin' guy. She's a hooker. And he's like, yeah, fuck you, bitch. Suck my dick. And st oh, he's not treating her like a lady? Yeah. You know, he's mouthing off to her. Perhaps he's a little unstable. Sure he is, but, you know, but you she's are a, a hooker. hooker. You're in a car yeah. with some guy. Oh, God. No, it, was, it was guy's fault. Yeah. Right. yeah. Always the guy's fault. I mean, fault. no, that's, that's how it works. You know, we they call you a bitch, and you, you can blow their heads off. And right. It's justified. We have another clip from uh, Bono meeting the president. Bono. As we move, move on. Uh, sorry, Dark. Go ahead. He's someone who has a lot of influence uh, to, and is committed to helping people uh, who are in need and lifting people out of poverty and helping those who are suffering uh, from AIDS. And those are priorities that the president shares. Oh, okay, that's Scott McKellen. The White House press secretary yes. talking about Bono and how the uh, how Bush appreciates uh, Bono's efforts on behalf of the world's poor. Appreciate it. Appreciates. Appreciate. Appreciating that means nothing. No, it means nothing. It, I appreciate They're you. They're worlds it means apart. It's They're just, worlds apart. Appreciating something. It's just one of those words that is overused and means absolutely nothing. It's an air breather walks on land. I could, you know, we're just about the same type of people. That's hilarious to be meeting with Elvis. Uh oh. Yeah, the Elvis meeting. That's like meeting with the lead singer, like the fine young cannibals right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Got to get the youth. <laughs> to get the young people. Eric in New York, what's up? Hey, good morning, boys. Morning, Eric. They took a lot of balls for uh, Demi Moore to shave her head at GI Jane too. Yeah, that's right. Ah, uh, yeah. Very courageous of her to do yeah, that. Like that ain't growing back. All right. Yeah, give me ten million for a movie. I'd shave my head. Yeah. But I'm sure somebody was, uh, would would sit her down and go, what were you thinking? Shaving your head? Oh, my Shaving God. Head. Well, you know. When I get into a role, yeah. then she'd launch into that like she never did St. Elmo's Fire. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It was not General bad. Hospital. Yeah. She was in General Hospital, wasn't she? And then uh, she's got to talk about with, with that same movie, G.I. Jane. Well, like, you know, it was a little rough at first, but after a while, I was just one of the guys just hanging out because it was just a me and a set full of guys, and we were... One no. of the guys, sure, with One those the I mean, like the, heads. Yeah. the psycho shape that they get into. It's like you have a personal trainer, personal chef, all that type of stuff, and it's just like, yeah, if I had like the stress of knowing that I was going to take off my shirt yeah. and my pasty torso was going to be showing in front of the whole country, 
Yeah. I, I, that would be enough motivation. The, the humiliation, if you're even remotely out of shape. And, and that's part of your job that day, you know, or, or for the period of time that you're doing that movie. Part of your job is getting into that shape. So it's yeah. not like, it's not like, you know, you have to leave work early. Or, or uh, before you work, you're, you're going to the gym like, like normal people do. That's part of it. I'm sure on the set was a gym for her and the trainer, and they'd do that in the morning, and then she'd go yeah. and shoot some stuff. Yeah, it's never as rough the as The personal they chef, make you know, sound. like that whore that you live with? Right, my is, personal is chef. Really, <laughs> that's the biggie, because you don't have to think anymore. Right. If you're driving yeah. down the street, there's no, oh, I should go to McDonald's and just no. shove. You know, that, a sal in your face, maybe take their tits out like it, like a yard house. <laughs> that <laughs> never happens. She is a responsible married woman who just comes and cooks healthy food. What about that story you were telling off the air, though? Remember that one, Opie? Uh, the one that had nothing you know, to do Bill, with a cook that comes over my house? Let me tell you something, Bill. Uh, usually I would uh, jump on the bandwagon and I would help you out in this situation. Mm -hmm. But my friend Anthony just bought a shotgun. You better watch it, Pally. Better watch where you go now. I am an armed citizen. I am part of the armed citizenry of this country now. My, my pal Anthony bought a shotgun. I I bowed under to the pressure of the media scare tactics, Opie. That's I'm admitting right. it. They were scaring us here in New York. They're uh, frightening the people with all these home invasions. Their home. There's a picture of me I put up on the website for Is that people your to gun? Photoshop. Yeah. That's your actual gun? That's my shotgun. Go to the other one that shows me and my rapier. <laughs> I let people photoshop. What the hell is wrong with you? There's me and my rapier and my shotgun. Are these pictures They've already up? put pictures. Yeah, they've already cut that one out and put me fighting Errol Flynn in a movie, <laughs> which is really funny. They put Hilarious. me in action movies. It's hysterical what uh, they do with the Photoshop. Back up just slightly for the new listeners. We're gaining new listeners every day. Yes. That's how Anthony used to uh, defend himself. That was my rapier, rapier, and that was my only means of, ho of home defense. He uh, lives on Long Island, and uh, there's an epidemic out there, Bill. You were, you were in Seattle when we were talking about this yesterday. Bill I live Burns in Nassau Studio. County. And there's, uh, they're, they're uh, all about the home invasions out there right now. The one with me just holding the shotgun, I want someone to uh, Photoshop me just in uh, an action figure box. <laughs> doesn't, that look like, yeah. doesn't that look like an action figure? <laughs> it, it looks like it's already Photoshop, like you were holding something else in your hand. And they put a gun in there. Wow, that's pretty impressive, man. What kind of gun is that? That is great. That is my Remington. I got my Remington uh, Tactical. So the same gun the, um, the uh, Border Patrol agents use, so I know it can you know, shoot he, he, he Mexicans. Bought, he bought... <laughs> he bought the gun when you don't know how to shoot. You get the shotgun. Just kind of spray it in that general area. No, for home defense, you want the shotgun. A lot of people have a lot of different ideas about that. But uh, it's got the little uh, flashlight right on the pump. I hit a button on the pump, and the flashlight comes on. And anything that's in the flashlight is getting hit. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's a wonderful weapon. But isn't it Turn like... the flashlight on and shoot. That's it. That's how easy it is. And if, if I have you to... can see it, you can kill it. That's <laughs> it. That's their selling point. And if you see my rapier there, I can take his ear when I'm done. I just whew, cut it right off and hang it up on the wall. Well, the pictures are up on opianthony.com. But uh, just to explain a bill, there's home invasions happening in Nassau, Nassau County. Nassau County, home invasion is going crazy. Pretty now, much in Anthony's area, more or yeah, less. Yeah, it's in the area that I live in. Now, it's uh, gangs, believe it or not, that are coming from Long Island. There are Long Island gangs, the, the M18. Coming from New York. The M. No, some of them are out on Long okay. Island in Brentwood. Well, the fat guys are coming from New York, the though. Fat, but the fat guys, there's a gang, a gang called the Fat Guys. They're out of Manhattan. Then there's the uh, M18. And then there's the M something 13. Uh, MS13? MS, MS13. These are like gangs that have come up it's from South America. It's a, it's uh, a gang America. of guys that have MS? Anything? Yeah, they're kind of <laughs> easy to hit. <laughs> Uh, police right now, there's a, a task force and a bounty, a $10,000 reward for information leading to the capture of these bandits in Nassau County. Uh, da, da, da. Police uh, yesterday revealed there was another home break-in Tuesday. That's must be white Inwood. people. They're, they're white gangs? <clears throat> no, these are no, ban no. bandits. No, these bandits. They put the kerchief around their mouth. People their of mouth. color are, are called hoodlums. Hoodlums. If they're white, they're, they're bandits. You know, that's Mexican. They, yeah, Mexican. They're South American. They come from uh, South America. They've uh, so they have uh, that formed gangs. Bullets in front yeah, of yeah. Come <laughs> like banditos. That's what they should call them. Big sombreros. Hey, gringo. What do you have in here? And they always, especially in the movies, they never seem like, uh, like it's going to be trouble when you first come up on them. 
Hey, amigo, what are you doing? And they sit around the campfire. You just happen to ride up, and like you think everything. You want good. some agua? Well, I'm just looking for a little water. I think we have some water for you. Hey, hey Dallas, we have some water there. Yeah. Hey, those are some big saddlebags you have on your horse. What, what do you have? In? Oh no, no, it's gonna be no, trouble. No. They're all dirty. There's a freshly raped woman? woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's Somebody's very nice, eh, senorita? Very pretty woman. Takes his hat off and bows to her like he's going to be a gentleman. <laughs> couple phone calls coming in. John, go ahead. Hey, Anthony, I was wondering if you're uh, going to be doing the uh, Lee Harvey Oswald thing, taking pictures of yourselves with your shotgun before you. Oh, the there you go. Person. That's kind of like what he did. The pose would go great. <laughs> it, uh, photoshopped into the black and white Lee Harvey Oswald picture, Yeah, I too. think the Photoshop's going to go crazy on whackbag.com tonight. The one where he's in the backyard with his, uh, his gun. The shotgun and his pistol he killed Tippett with. Yeah, exactly. Uh, very nice. All right. Let's say hi to Tony in <laughs> North Carolina. Someone put me on the Channel 7 Eyewitness News page. <laughs> Long Island Police Form Home Invasion Task Force, and it's me with my shotgun. <laughs> Radio shock jock Anthony Cumia will be heading up the task force. He his quarter saying, I am on Swoogie Patrol. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I bought into it and uh, went down to fine folks down at uh, Coliseum uh, Guns down there, right right in uh, Uniondale, right yeah. across from the Nassau Coliseum. Anthony was uh, a little paranoid yesterday there, Bill. He was, he, he was starting to feel uh, like he really needed to protect himself. They break into the houses. Here's what they do. The roving little gangs at about 3 in the morning or so. They break in uh, to your house. Uh, you're awakened to a gun in your face. And uh, they t tie... Here's their M.O. so far. They tie up the family with the phone cords, uh, anything they could get their hands on. Then they ransack the place, rip you off, and leave after maybe working you over a little bit. One guy uh, yet the other day... Uh, the the male homeowner had an NYPD shirt on, but he wasn't a cop. It's one of those guys who just buy the NYPD shirts, yeah. and they went bullshit on him. They beat him up a little bit, asking him, "Where's the gun, motherfucker? Where's the gun?" Assuming he was a cop and had a gun, <laughs> so they worked him over. I'm just a tourist. Yeah, I. That's what we I said. bought it after 9/11. Yeah, yeah. I had some support. I have an FDNY shirt too. It's not like I'm putting out fires, guys. Could you not just <laughs> <pistol> with me? <laughs> <laughs> and. uh yeah, so I, I'm hearing all these home invasions right around my area, too, which is a little frightening. So uh, I figured I'd rearm myself. I've had guns my whole life. I've just been through a period of time when I was living in and Brooklyn. And shotgun's the easiest just to pull that out from underneath the pillow? Shotgun, well, the easiest would probably be a handgun. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What's but you got to get, you got to wait seven months to get a handgun. Oh, you, you, you want to kill people period. now. I want, well, that's what happened in the, in the gun store I went into, Coliseum uh, uh, Guns. A uh, guy was buying a pistol, so uh, the sales guy takes his ID and stuff and goes up upstairs, comes back down, and he goes, all right, well, come back uh, th uh, three days. The uh, guy had his waiting period, you know, come back, and we'll go through the rest of this. And the guy did the uh, Simpsons line from the the Homer line from the Simpsons. He goes, but I'm mad now. <laughs> <laughs> They're joking down at the gun store. It's hysterical. <laughs> he goes, but I'm mad now. <laughs> and then uh, one of the the guys that worked there, was saying, uh, he goes, uh, w w what can I help you with? I go, uh, I need shotgun home security. And he goes, ah, boy, are we selling these like hotcakes. <laughs> he goes, he sold about eight of them in the past two days, eight shotguns. And he goes, uh, yesterday some woman came in with uh, an 80-year-old lady, and they both walked out with shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> An 80-year-old woman toting oh some heat. <laughs> God bless America. That's right, God damn it. I loved an armed citizenry because here's when, here's when the home invasions will stop going up. They're going up right now. They're going up. Here's when they'll start tapering off. The first one of these motherfuckers that are laying dead in someone's living room because, oops, wrong house, and they get shot. Because now it's just easy pickings. No one's fighting back at all. They Doesn't leave their doors them, open. Doesn't that make them up the ante? No, no. Nah. It really makes them go. This, what, what happens is there was a gang of guys <laughs> that no, are ripping no, these no houses. No research in this. Nah, no, we got a mic in front of us. We got a mic in front of us. Yeah, you hear this mic? Doesn't work. This We're expert. experts. <laughs> That's all it takes. I'm Here's what happens. If you want to be an expert at home, just get a microphone. You get a gang. They start ripping off these places. It makes the news. Now you get other people sitting back on, you know, wow, something. Look how easy this is. These guys have been getting away with this every single time. Why don't we just go around, check some open doors, look around garages, windows, 
and start breaking in. These people don't even fight back, and it's worked. And now the, these things are uh, they're getting more often, more. Can I use the word brazen? Ooh, more brazen. Oh, 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 I love that word. Oh, oh, very nice. And uh, it's it's it just going to be take daylight somebody. hours for it to be brazen. It would brazen would have to be daylight. You're right. Three in the morning isn't very brazen it through isn't. an open window, unarmed house. That's not brazen at all, no, is it? There's nothing brazen about that. Daylight robbing a precinct. Let me ask you. This. That's brazen. <laughs> at what point uh, mm -hmm. can you shoot them? And it's like. It's okay. Uh, if they're walking down the street in my neighborhood and they're of any color but white, then you are completely you within you? your rights to Self shoot him. Self-defense. It is self-defense. He intended to rob somebody is pretty much it. I believe the law goes <laughs> if you feel that your life is in danger, uh, you can then use deadly force. Is that gray? It's, it's kind of gray. There are some real specifics you have to stick to. But it really is, if you feel, it doesn't even have to actually be that your life is threatened. If you feel your life is being threatened, you can uh, take that person's life. You can use deadly physical force. If someone's in your house, if they don't show a weapon, they're in your house, but they are menacing you, your family, and you feel that uh, you, you are in danger of being killed, you can kill that person. Oh, it'll go through a grand jury and all that shit, you know. It's not going to be like they come back, pat you on the back, and go, all right, sir, here's your oh, gun. You it's know. not like the end of Bonanza. There's always <laughs> shit. No, and then the, whoever you shot, uh, <clears throat> if they don't die, you probably got a lawsuit on your hands. If they do die, you probably got a, a family lawsuit on your hands where some lawyer will come out of the woodwork and say this poor individual was just looking for blah, blah, blah. He was drunk. He was on drugs. He thought he, he it was the wrong house. He needed this, that, the other. There's always problems. Flat. But the bottom line is, it's much better to have to deal with that than it is having to deal with the memory of your wife or girlfriend being raped in front of you, uh, Has that you happened being yet? shot. Uh, in these uh, cases of yes. home invasions, no. That's a There's very been some irresponsible assault. statement he just made. Uh, no, because now well, I'm just with his do, microphone. Though. Like it hasn't <laughs> happened on Long Island. Like there's never been a home invasion with a rape involved or a murder. It's much better to have to uh, deal with that. I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6, my friend, if I may quote somebody <laughs> from Alabama. <laughs> so congratulations, <laughs> Anthony. I am an armed citizen. Don't fuck with me, buster. Yeah, and the pictures are up on opianthony.com. A very, very impressive... Uh, uh, you might want to shoot a few times, dude. It's not like this isn't me g running into a gun store, never shooting before. I've probably shot more guns than somebody that's been in the army. Believe me, my whole t youth was spent shooting weapons. That's all I did as a kid. Did my thirteenth you... birthday, I got a pistol. My father bought me a pistol and a girl. For my 13th birthday, <laughs> that's what I got. I got laid and got to shoot a gun off after it. I got you know a 10-speed bike. You knew we had one of those, those, uh, one of those raccoon, those Davy Crockett hats. Oh yeah, because that was yeah. that was the hit show when he was 18. <laughs> I was in, not in 1955. <laughs> I was not watching Davy Crockett. <laughs> I had a cowboy hat though. I had a, it was like in a very equestrian area. All right, I, I, I miss calm grew down. up in. Calm down. And I had the whole schmear. And I got a holster, nice low-slung uh, holster. I had my six-gun that uh, I got for my birthday. And I, uh, I saddled up my horse and went out there and uh, and I did some shooting. That's what I did. All right. And it was nonstop shooting ever since. We uh, we really should take a break. We have so much show to do. Yes, we do. We have Bill Burr in studio. Sounds like uh, you got a little cold, though, Bill. Oh, yeah. You know, flying all over this fucking... Last we saw Bill, he was doing our show, and then, like, he had luggage, and he went to Seattle, and then he came back the same day. You never slept in Seattle, right? No, I, you know, I ended up coming back, and when we landed, the second we landed, some lady just started crying hysterically. It sounded like a baby at first. Get out of here. And Because it, it was muffled in a coat, and then I kind of looked up, it was two rows, and this, I mean, fucking wailing. When you landed? Yes, was w all of a Why? sudden it just started wailing. Was she petrified? That's and then it what all the stewardess were asking. Why? They came over, ma'am, ma'am, what is the problem? What is the problem? She was like, Wah! I mean, screaming, just wailing. And then they go, what is the problem? She goes, call 911 and started wailing. And then she just kept yelling, where is Frank? 
like 90 fucking times. I don't know if this dude died. How do you lose someone on a plane? Well, there's a whole movie about that. I didn't know if she Flight just plan. if she just landed and she was going to a funeral. It was this weird thing where it was wow. just like the pain in her voice. So you had this this fucked up combination of like empathy for her and then yeah. also like could you please shut, shut the, fuck the fuck up? up. Yeah. yeah. At least she shut waited until you guys usually, landed. Man. If it was in mid flight, yeah. Imagine, yeah. Oh, it's uh, awful. Then imagine we... mid flight and they can't calm her down. What a nightmare Dude, that would have been. So then we end up pulling to the gate and ask everybody to. And there's trying to say in the most friendly voice ever as she's sitting there wailing and everyone can hear it. Um, when we pull up to the little jetway, could everybody just uh, remain in your seats? Uh, a few of the passengers have to get up early. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you. I'm going to guess it's the person wailing asking for Frank. And they just picked, they stood her up and the, waitre, the waitress, the stewardess, uh, yeah. backed her way out as this woman just had her arms like draped around her neck. Wow. That's like some broken-hearted 16-year-old. Yeah, oh, where's Frank? There was a medical emergency. We were like over like Wisconsin. So I'm like, I said a little prayer. Please don't let them have a heart attack, and please yeah. don't let them land this fucking thing. Keep going. But nobody was carried off the plane like in a stretcher or anything. Uh-uh. So everyone's fine on the plane, but somehow she freaked out, wailing, wow. wailing when you landed. That is. And weird. what was the medical emergency? You ever find out? No, there was like EMT. I don't know what his deal was. Weird. It was a weird flight. All right. Wick, <laughs> wacky, wild stuff happening yeah, on jet wild. Blue. Hey, how about those planes? Oh, we got this? That's good, too. All right, we got so much to do. When we come back, we might have a new leader in the Assault on the Media contest, and it was really, really good. Yeah. And really then when good. I was at baggage claim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's interesting. The video's up on opianthony.com if you want to get a head start on the Assault on the Media thing. As we go to break, it's... Uh, the fine president singing "You Too" Sunday Bloody Sunday. This makes sense today. Yes. Good pick up by Eric. Mm-hmm. Bush and Bono met, and uh, we were playing this back. Uh, I don't know, six months ago or yep. so. Some guy uh, took Bush's speeches and got the words to "Sunday Bloody Sunday" and made this. Check it out. Ah, uh, we're back with the Opie and Anthony program. Bill Burr in studio today. BillBurr.com and Bill Burr on MySpace, right? Yeah, that monster tour event. Bill uh, showed up to work today, Anthony. Yeah, not not one luggage, but two, two, yeah, two pieces oh, yeah. of luggage, one huge bag. I guess that's uh, that, I'm on that's the like road a, for, for the, how long? Uh, like the next, I don't know, <laughs> to yeah. like a a week from this coming Sunday. I won't be in my. Apartment. So that's your whole. That's everything you're gonna need for for over a week, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he came in uh, double-handed, man, rolling luggage. I'm like, where are you going? I hate the, the Portland, huge Maine, pack. Portland, Providence, Maine. Providence, Rhode Island, then Boston, then Albany, then L.A., then Buffalo, then Virginia, and Holy then Atlanta. Crap. Holy crap. Oh. I'm getting tired just listening to that. Uh, you I know who had that same itinerary? Who? <laughs> who? Oh, God, he's going to go back to that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to this. <laughs> Charlie Rocket. Oh, come okay. on, Opie. <laughs> Where were well, you? Well, <laughs> I'm distracted because I, I see your brother out there. He came in with a bunch of the guys from Livewire, and uh, I think it's just Livewire out there, the ACDC tribute band that's playing our Halloween party, so we're going to talk to no, Brother Joe. No, i got to see. That was, that was my band when I was in high school. Yeah. Oh, really? you got to oh. hear how good these guys are. It's amazing. Yeah, well, Joe brought some samples and uh, uh, some samples of some really bad uh, tribute bands. Right. And then tribute bands where I don't know why, like, they have a tribute band because no one sees the original person anymore. Yeah. Like he's got a couple of those. Like the AHA tribute band. Exactly. The, I, no shit. What? They have an AHA tribute band. They had one song. They had one song. Take and that's what on me. AHA. Take on me. Take on me. Anyway. I like that song. So we're going to get Brother Joe in here. In I want to see someone who isn't them sing it. Ooh, I'm, w- yeah. I'm willing to pay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe oh, that's crap. why they're, they. Maybe and that's you know, why they're. No! <laughs> you, know you know it has to be the encore, too, because that's the only song people know. You can't open with this. People I heard. Leave. Some band, band that played their hit twice, though. Didn't Rick say they did it twice? Was it this band that they opened with it, and at the end of the night they closed with it? <laughs> but they jazzed it up a little bit for the ending. I'm sure. This, they must just play it for. 20 minutes, just because they know everyone's there to, to hear this song. Oh, yeah, do the whole audience play along? Not yeah. just the left side. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, right side. You got to step it up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good stuff. Woo! Speaking of uh, stuff. wacky things that happen in concert, yeah, you're talking about them playing this song maybe twice in concert. Uh huh. I went. I once uh, went and saw Paul Simon. It was the "You Could Call Me Al" days. Ah, of course. And I went to the show, and uh, he plays "You Could Call Me Al," and he has like a hundred musicians on stage, African guys, all sorts of instruments that you've never seen or heard before. Uh huh. And he just blows out "You Could Call Me Al," where the whole place is dancing and singing and freaking out, right? Yeah. It was like the moment of the Paul Simon show. And the song finally ends, and I'm not lying, it was about a 15-minute song. And all of a sudden, he just looks at the crowd and goes, What the hell? Let's do it again! And Are does the kidding? entire fucking thing again. Like, he doesn't have enough songs to do. So he probably spent close to a half hour on one song, You Could Call Me Out. That would piss me off. But at the time, it was outrageous. Oh my God, how dare you do that? That's unbelievable. What? What? That would really piss me off, because, you know, he's got all those classics from Simon and Garfunkel that he's not playing because he's got to play this twice. But he thought he was being, you know, ultra cool by going, what the hell, let's do it again. And this is play, like, Kodachrome? Yeah. Play a little Kodachrome. Play a little I'm I'm a rock, I am an island. <laughs> Fifty ways? About Fifty ways to leave your lover. About Steve Gadd? The boxer. Right. Anyway, still crazy after all these years. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go in a bunch of different directions here. I'm is talking about ONA and shirts. Once again, on MSNBC. Again MS today. Yeah. We love the I-Man. I guess at this point, Imus is now uh, working for the same company as us. That's the only thing I can figure out. Is, yeah. is I Imus think he knows something marketing? we don't. He I'm knows the new uh, don't. marketing director <laughs> for the uh, Opie and Anthony show. He's, yeah. He works for Infinity yeah. Broadcasting. He's on MSNBC. <laughs> he does his uh, radio show on TV every morning. And uh, yeah. I don't even know how long this has been going on. For over a month, the Brian Wilson character, which is Rob Bartlett, yeah. he's been wearing uh, my brother's Opie and Anthony Spread the Virus t-shirt, mm -hmm. which you can get by going to opianthony.com. And uh, Imus is obsessed with us and the stupid shirts that we have out there. He's a big fan. You gotta appreciate that. So I'm a true radio legend. So we just got some audio yeah. handed to us of I miss <laughs> talking about the uh, the show and and my brother's t-shirts again. Here it is. How's Opie and Anthony doing, by the way? I see you have their t-shirt on. I don't, I don't I don't know. How are you, Opie? <laughs> ONA Party Rock XM202. Someone in my family stole my Opie and Anthony t-shirt, and you can't. They're on XM Satellite Radio. You can't get another Opie and Anthony T-shirt. Well, you can, but you have to. You have to get a hold of Opie's brother. It's a process. <laughs> and uh, Opie's brother. Process. What's his brother's name? Do you know? Elmo. Elmo. <laughs> you have to get a hold of Opie. Opie's brother Elmo. What were their parents thinking about? By the way, <laughs> Opie and Elmo. Anyway, you have to get a hold of That's Elmo. His sister Betty Bumperjack. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the hell knows where Elmo is. And but Elmo, he eventually will send you the shirt. So yeah, you just gotta meet him with cash in an alleyway. <laughs> but you have to pay for the shirt ahead of time, and uh, and then the, I guess what he does is he makes them one, once he gets the money. So how much are they? About nineteen, twenty bucks, something like that, or more? Well, it depends. Double XL. <laughs> Gotta have that fat boy surcharge. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 28 after the art. God damn, Imus, thank you. That's thank you funny. so much. He's really helping. Uh, I don't know what the hell were their parents thinking. <laughs> <laughs> He's really helping us out. He's promoting us on his show. He doesn't yeah. give a fuck. That's why we love the guy. Yep. He doesn't listen to Infinity Broadcasting. Yeah. He doesn't listen. He yeah. does his own thing. He's not a pussy. The guy can take some some fun, some ribbing, some fun, good-natured ribbing. And he's right about my brother. My brother's like, uh, you know, he barely leaves his house, and he's like, you know, designing shirts 24 hours a day. And that's his gig. And then uh, you, you do have. Well, I, I think it's getting better, but you send him the money, and then he goes to the printer and gets a few made. <laughs> like my brother lives a really strange life. You think I'm oh, that weird. was all real. I thought he was. Oh, for the most part, no. for the most part, that is real. Yes, my brother is is a strange dude. I'm He's, afraid to open my mouth now after blowing that bit the other day. <laughs> oh, the people were commenting on that. On oh, the I got a lot of shit on that. Hey, nice job there. Nice job. By the Ruined way, the bit. My brother came up with a Halloween slash first anniversary T-shirt that will yes. be given away at the Hard Rock Cafe on Halloween night. I like it. The back is just full of 
words from the show, people, catchphrases, yeah, things that really uh, a fun shirt. And if you go to the Halloween show that we're doing at the Hard Rock <laughs> fun. Cafe, you can read the back of it and reminisce. All right, I, I think uh, everyone that attends will get a free shirt. Yeah, right when I said that, I was like, how could a shirt be fun? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> madcap. But uh, if you want a shirt because you're not going to make it to the Hard Rock Cafe, you could go to yeah. OpenAnthony.com. <laughs> My brother needs the money. That's why I'm uh, promoting this right yeah. now, yeah. helping him yeah. out so he can yeah. pay some bills. Yeah. But I'm just a, a big fan of the program. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. Anthony, the assault on the media contest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, assault on the media. We love when people do this. Get behind a news camera. Wait, now we got to back up. A Actually, bit. in front of the news camera. Behind would be silly. I would never see you. Paul on Long Island. Hey, boys. Hey. I think what I am is he just fucking hates Howard Ducks. And that's part of the reason, too. Well, you know, I've talked to Imus. And, I mean, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure he loves the show. I mean, I love it. Uh, I'm going to give you a little insight if, you're gonna, if you shut up. Yeah, don't backpedal, man. You started out strong. Paul, you're very accurate. All right, man. Because I've talked to Imus, and Imus uh, always respected the fact that we never backed down to Howard. You know? Yeah. And uh, he had yeah. his problems with Howard over the years, and he really likes that we uh, stand up to the guy, and we're not scared of him. Mm -hmm. He respects that. And also, hey, and I have my Mossberg Model 500. Oh, you do? Yeah, I mean, I'm in uh, East Northport, so uh, I'm waiting for someone to come like around me and they're going to get fucking fragged. The armed citizenry of Long Island. Welcome, That's my right. friend. All right. Thank <laughs> you. Let's go to Rich in D.C. Here's a Photoshop of me, uh, home invasion Schwoogieville, and uh, it's got me in some living room. With a bunch of rappers outside the window for some reason, <laughs> and I'm shooting a hole through the uh, glass. <laughs> Great job. Uh, the Who photoshops are going crazy on whackbag.com. Can't you okay. just see yeah. the, the, the innocent victim that's about ready to get shot? Just like that guy's quote, like, oh, yeah, yeah. just wait for someone to come around me. Oh, someone's going to come home late. Frag. Some drunk family member is going to come home late. You know, he put the key in the door and oh, yeah. can't quite get the door open. Someone's just going to unload around through the door and take out their uh, father or something. Yeah. And there I am fighting Errol Flynn on a stairway. <laughs> we got the Al Pacino Scarface scene, too, which is really good. Yeah, yeah. The Photoshops are rolling in. Go to whackbag.com. All right. Let's say hi to Rich in D.C. What's up, Rich? Hey, boys, thanks for taking my call. All right. Sure. Jimmy, if Jimmy's listening, happy birthday, Jimmy. Uh, what I'm calling about is on the front page of the style section of the Washington Post is a huge story about how Howard Stern is tanking in the D.C. area, that ever since he made his big announcement a year ago, his ratings have continually plummeted, and it's gotten so bad that right now, the sports junkies and Don and Mike are beating the shit out of them in the ratings in D.C. Oh, yeah. my God. Well, yeah, this is... isn't even something that's subjective or, you know, you like him, you don't like him. This is just a fact. I mean, this is ratings. This is fact. He's His ratings have been tanking. And the fact is he's not as great as he tries to tell his audience on a daily basis. Uh, a lot of cities have uh, have uh, just just stop listening to him. Does he still have a huge listenership? Of course he does. In New York he does. But it's nowhere near what it was uh, a few years back, and that's when I think he would have been worth the, the $500 million that uh, Sirius has decided to pay him. That's when it would have been worth it, because that's when it would have gotten a huge amount of subscribers uh, to, to Sirius, but I really think they kind of missed, the, uh, missed the train on this one. Uh, well, if anybody has any doubts, it's in black and white. All they got to do is check the front page of the style section of today's Washington mm -hmm. Post. It has a picture of them and a two-page article on it. Well, I just got a communique from Elo. Elo. He just sent me that exact article. Shock Jock's audience is beating him to the door. July through September ratings lowest in years. Washington Post reports the Howard Stern exodus has begun. Unfortunately for Stern, it's his audience that's leaving, not him. The Shock Jock won't jump to satellite radio until January, but in the meantime, his listeners in the Washington area seem to be heading for the exits. Stern's nationally syndicated morning program, which is heard locally on WJFK, suffered a dramatic fall in the summer audience ratings, which in turn helped drag down WJFK's overall popularity. Stern's share of radio's most lucrative audience, adults age 25 to 54, fell by nearly one-third during the July through September period. It's Bottoming well. out at 3.4% according to Arbitron, which measures radio audiences. That was the lowest total for Stern in years and possibly decades. 
given his long and successful career. Mm. Uh, during the same period in New York, Stern lost 15% of his listeners. Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah. Just, it just keeps going on yeah. and on. Yeah. It's, it goes on for like two pages. No. But that's that's yeah. some of the headlines yeah. right there. No. Yeah. Okay, okay boys, I got to fuck no. that to work, but I just uh, thought I'd make you Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, you Rich. Okay. <laughs> point, counterpoint. <laughs> Don Imus. <laughs> Ray Romano. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, yeah. No! <laughs> Come on! Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Uh, yeah. No! <laughs> <laughs> Next time, on a very special Everybody Loves Raymond, Ray's brother needs a helping hand. Ray, I got a problem, man. You gotta help me. No! I picked up a tranny last night at Hunt's Point, and there was an accident. No! We were trying this erotic asphyxiation thing, and he... She was supposed to pitch me before it ran out of air. What are you doing? But Ray's father isn't buying it. What a lot of bull. Come on. All right, you got me. I picked him up on 10th Avenue. The family hijinks don't stop there. Ray, you got to help me get rid of the body. I don't want to do it. No, come on. It'll be fun. We'll chop it up and bury it out in Jersey. Yeah, I live on Long Island. All <laughs> in the next Everybody Loves Raymond. Tonight at 8. Oh, very another, good job, Steve. Another Raymond and Nathaniel promo. and probably the rest of the gang helping out with the writing of that fine <laughs> promo featuring Bill Burr. All right. That's a good one. The Assault on the Media <laughs> Contest, Anthony. Yes. I'm trying to get the show back on track here. <laughs> we're all yeah, we're place. on track. It's just a wavy mountain road. Yeah, sure. All right. The Assault on the Media Contest. Uh, the, the contest for October is really, dare I say, heating up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely heating up. We do this contest every month, and uh, we, every month we got lots of great prizes. This month we got the portable Delphi MiFi radio with a one-year free subscription. Also, dinner with E Rock at Paisano's on Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. Also, you win a World Poker Tour Season Two DVD, a Ministry of Sound Stick Axe music mixer, and finally admission to the Opie and Anthony Show studios to check out a live show. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you might remember um, John from New Jersey, Anthony. John from New Jersey. Hmm. John from New Jersey is the current leader. His video is up on OpianAnthony.com, and it was a very, very good one. He beat out No Filter Paul, which we thought... Oh, of course. We thought no one was going to beat out No Filter Paul, because he looked like a, 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 a crazed man. No, this guy's a maniac. But then uh, this guy, John from Jersey, uh, hit WABC-TV here in New York. And basically, his assault was uh, jumping up and down, looking like a maniac as well, going from side to side, trying to pull out his hair on live TV. Yeah, he wanted to look like he was pulling his hair out of his head. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> he comes off like a true lunatic. Right. He took uh, Paul's cue or or what have you, or, or what Paul did, and made it a little better, I think. Every time the reporter moved in his way, he went to the other side. He was like zigging and zagging to get uh, on camera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's actually trying to pull his hair out. So the video's up on opianthony.com, yeah, but one. here's the audio, which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty good, too. Mother Nature's trifecta of high tides, steady winds, blowing rains, etc., forced this, the lake, to spill over on both sides. And the result was we'll evacuation we'll 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 on Lake Park we'll 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 and also we'll we'll Truly a pest of this program right there. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, very, very good. Very good. Yeah, that's why we call these people pests. Yeah, they, pests. They really are pests. And we mentioned this the other day. you got to think they're having meetings now behind closed doors going, look, guys, this is happening. It's Opie and Anthony, mm -hmm. and they're pests, and they're going to do it for a while, and eventually it's going to go away. So let's just ignore it. Let's make believe it's not happening, and just, just plow through your report, and eventually this will die down. Most of them are pretty good at it. And I say to those people saying that to their people, this will not die down. No, no, it'll keep going. Actually, we see a spike in the assaults on the media lately. Yeah. It's starting to spike up again. Absolutely. People coming to the table, uh, getting in front of those cameras. And our latest one I really enjoyed. Well, we kind of made the suggestion uh, earlier this week, I think, that I think it's time to take it to the next level with this assault on the media contest. Mm -hmm. Remember, we don't want you touching the reporter. That's key to this. Yep. But it looks like a lot of uh, reporters are starting to touch the pest, by the way. Yeah, yeah. The pests are getting touched. They're getting pushed. They're getting dragged out of uh, out of the, the camera range. They're grabbed. So uh, the other day, 
No, no arrests yet. Thank no. God. No. Molested. molested. We're, oh, you said molested. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you said arrest. We're 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 used to people getting arrested because of this That's program. True. We're due for a good uh, uh, arrest, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, uh, Billy Bar. Bill, you want to take one for the team? Oh, yeah. The Everyone else has. Even Lewis Black took one for the team. Time. Joint. So we were talking about the assault on the media contest. We said it's time to take it to the next level, and we need to maybe engage the reporter in conversation. Yeah, well, because we've they're gone ignoring phases. us. They're ignoring us. We're jumping up and down and looking like lunatics, and they're mm-hmm. just plowing through the reports for the most part. Every once in a while, you get a producer, you know, pu- you know, pulling them out of the shot. Yeah. Or you get someone like Arthur Chien who is stupid enough to actually turn around and say, "What the fuck is your problem, man?" Mm-hmm. But in general, they're ignoring and plowing through their reports. So we said, "Hey." Start engaging the reporter in a little conversation. And someone took our advice. We don't even know who this guy is yet. Yeah. We don't even know who this guy is, but the video is up on opianthony.com. And uh, we've watched the video a few times, and I think this guy, if he comes forward, is the new leader for the assault on the media contest for October. Could be the new leader. Uh, the video is is just priceless, obviously. But, he gets mushed. But listen to the audio. Oh, yeah, you want to explain the video? They mush him. Uh, well, he, he blurts out Opie and Anthony XM Satellite Radio, but he just kind of, kind of saunters into the uh, the frame, kind of gets right in there, uh, over the shoulders, repo- uh, the uh, shoulder of the reporter, and uh, starts saying Opie and Anthony XM Satellite Radio. The reporter kind of sees him coming, and you can see him look out of the corner of his eye, and then he's in frame with him, saying Opie and Anthony XM Satellite Radio, and then the reporter takes his hand, and pushes. Uh, this guy's face. He just pushes his <laughs> face right out of the frame. <laughs> it's a classic mush. And, uh, yeah, you said he was saying Thanks, Opie and Anthony, uh, XM Satellite Radio, but he was actually asking the reporter. Yeah. You know, do you listen to Opie and Anthony on XM Satellite Radio? Yeah, he was Satellite engaging Radio. him in conversation. Watch, Bill, here, here it is. is. The video's up on uh, OpieandAnthony.com. Just Perth Amboy. Watch Bill Burr's, uh, listen to Bill Burr's reaction. Here's, here. uh, the reporter. He's looking to the Now side. he knows someone's there. He's looking again. And this guy's asking him if he listens to Opie and Anthony, and now he just pushes him. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this happened on WABC Channel 7 again. Yeah. So ABC 7 is getting hit a lot lately as far as this assault on the media thing goes. That's why that is. Let's listen, uh, let's, uh, listen to the audio. The search dogs actually missed the 10-year-old boy the first time they went by that house. Don't know if that matters now. He's a little dehydrated with a few cuts and bruises, but he'll be okay. We're live in Perth Amboy tonight with some company. Jeff Begay's Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Everybody's celebrating out there. Jeffrey, thank you. Look at him. Everybody's celebrating out there. Yeah, just another uh, drunk. Yeah, make believe uh, an Opie and Anthony Pest didn't get to one of your reporters. <laughs> yeah. You got to see like the video, he though. He just peeks around the corner yeah. like... Like he's just looking out his yeah. window yeah. or something. Hey, like, uh, how you doing over there? Yeah, a little Kermit the Frog moment. Yeah. Now you got the guy that's pulling his hair out, screaming, yelling, "Opie and Anthony XM Satellite Radio." But this guy, very subtle. Mm-hmm. Definitely, you got to give him points on a new style. And I like the new style. Yep. New style. What do you think? Uh, uh, I like it. It's very close. I got to tell you, very sort of, close. Uh, pest chic. Yeah. So we'll have yeah. to we'll have to sit on this and decide if he's the new leader or not. Yeah, I'm not willing to appoint him the uh, winner right now because uh, I, the last guy jumping up and down, pulling his hair out. It's two completely different You're deliveries. Have to, like, there's going to be different genres of it. Yeah, everything's yeah, been sort of a just... crazed action movie. This is more of a uh, subtle. It's, a, it's an a lot, adult an adult comedy. A lot more story driven. This yeah. one. <laughs> but Bill makes a good point. How he just peeks around and all of a sudden he's in the shot, just very casual. Yeah, a lot of layers to this character. Mm-hmm. He never loses mm-hmm. his cool. All right. Uh, you want to get Brother Joe in here before we take a break? Certainly. Halloween party's happening. Halloween night at the Hard Rock Cafe. We were supposed to give out uh, tickets this week. We didn't. Yeah. So it's going to be first come, first serve, as they say, at the Hard Rock Cafe Halloween night. I guess. Door- what about the out-of-town people? The doors open at 7. I don't mm-hmm. know. If what about out- Steve's secret list? Steve has a secret list? Yeah, Steve apparently... Um, Steve at foundrymusic.com. If you email him, uh, he'll put you on the secret list so you can get into the uh, Halloween party, Opie. <laughs> and he will put his big fat fist in my face when he hears me say that. <laughs> yes, he will. <laughs> He's going to get all these emails now, and I'm going to get one going, Why are people emailing me? <laughs> no idea. I can't get them on any list. <laughs> That's almost as. Here he comes. Can you stop? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, Steve? Can you stop? 
What's the matter? Because people believe that when you say it. Well, everyone knows you do have Isn't a secret list. Isn't there a secret there list? Was, past tense, was. Oh, so then, there was. And then that limey gentleman opened his... Yeah, no filter, Paul screwed it up and yeah. posted it on the website saying, uh, There's a secret list. Yeah. Anyone who wants to get on it, Gabner. I'm uh, starting a secret list, by the way. Are you? Mail me $100. Oh. <laughs> wow. Mail me $100, and I will make sure you get into the party. Secret <laughs> list. Yeah, that kind of list we can handle. <laughs> no, we were, we were actually trying to accommodate some of the people that were coming from out of town. But, yeah. And, you know, and it was a case-by-case -case thing, and every email that Ben and I sent out said, look, yes, you're in. Uh, have a good time. If this hits a message board, do not bother coming. Right. And it hit a message board, and we just said, that's it. No almost more. Got, uh, almost got Paul banned from the party, too, I oh, heard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we let him sweat for a he couple days. He was freaking out. Did you hear about that, Up that uh, Paul, No Filter Paul, was told that he couldn't come to the party because he had posted that, and he was banned from the party, him and his wife. And I got an email within seconds. Everybody right. got emails going, what the fuck is this? Why ain't I allowed? And uh, we let him hang for a while. Yeah, I let him dangle for Let him uh, dangle like thinking he was banned from the party. What's, he, uh, what's his costume going to be? Hopefully... English lamey yeah. asshole. Uh, <laughs> just wear regular street clothes. Yeah, regular street clothes. Yeah. You know, I think uh, we should ban him from the party until he, like, moons on live TV. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's to see that. It's not about actually wanting to see it. It's that he did it. It's about well, humiliation. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Uh, okay. Someone gets it. No, I want to see fucking No Filter Paul's ass on live TV. Of course not. Want to isolate that? <laughs> <laughs> Just take out the no, and we have a great clip. Yeah, great. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, John Corzon. <laughs> Opie wants to see a bare English ass on television. <laughs> So anyway, Steve has a secret list, so keep emailing Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Steve at FoundryMusic.com. Secret list. He's not busy enough, I don't think. No, no, You'll no, get no, into no. the part. <laughs> oh, poor <laughs> Steve. That two hours that he, uh, <laughs> that he sleeps, he doesn't need to sleep. <laughs> he's a, he's a <laughs> he always has a secret list, though, isn't that true? Like, always. Yeah, always. For everything. All right. It's very secretive. Uh, Brother Joe's playing our Halloween party. Uh, yeah. At the Hard Rock Cafe, Times Square, Halloween night. That's correct. With Jeez, Two yeah. U, the U2 tribute band that's just blowing up. Yep. Yeah. Playing it's, all over the place. It's fun. We just played the Wachovia Center. We did the, uh, we did two shows in front of U2, believe it or not. It was a, uh, it's the, uh, the they call it the singular, the, sing, yeah, it was really weird. They call it the singular pavilion. Mm -hmm. It's like where you walk through to get into the arena. And uh, we played for about 50,000 of U2's fans. So, wait, wait. These people are in. going in to see U2. Yeah, well, they were going in to see uh, uh, Damian Marley. But um, we played right up until the beginning of Damian Marley's set uh, from like 5 o'clock until about 7.30. And everyone that was coming into that concert got to go, you know, come past where we were playing. And we had at any given time standing there in front of us about 3,000 people that were actually just Holy sitting there watching uh, watching us do songs like The Unforgettable Fire and old, like, glorious stuff they're not doing live. Right. And freaking the F out, man. They were just, yeah, it was the best show I've ever done. Best show we've ever played. Wow. Man, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was amazing. A lot of things happened. Uh, we're now at the Borgata because of that. We ended up getting, uh, getting. I mean, h hundreds, hundreds of emails. Let me know when you're playing the Borgata. I, mean, I have uh, much too much uh, spare money laying around. <laughs> I'm sure they need it. Yeah, Bastards. no, we'll, we'll be there. Uh, <laughs> you know, believe it or not, it was uh, uh, Ron Hudson's. The um, remember the Hudson brothers? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. The, he's the guy over there, and uh, his main guy was uh, was uh, was in the in the audience when we were playing. And he walks up to me, and hands hands a Borgata card off, and uh, uh -oh. I said, "What's this?" He goes, "Ah." Uh, I want you guys in my room. I look, I see Borgata Hotel. Perhaps you can uh, <laughs> All right. get some of your friends in show business to also come and <laughs> yeah. play here. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Dress like boss hog. Uh, speaking yeah. of friends, <laughs> I, got, cigar. I do have Chris from Livewire, the lead singer, yep. and uh, Anthony from 2112, the yeah, lead singer of 2112. Yeah, because we had a Rush tribute band and the ACDC uh, yes, tribute band. They and are, then, they and are you the two best, as well. the best at what they do. Now, yes. what is good about tribute bands is the really good ones. Mm-hmm. And the really bad ones. Yes. The mediocre ones, you give yeah. a shit, right? It's just the ones that you go, holy shit, they are spot on, yep. amazing. And then there's the ones that are like, 
Oh, my God, why are they trying? And both of them, very entertaining. The obscure tribute bands are the ones that rock. Yeah, did you actually band. find ones like uh, an Anne Murray tribute band? <laughs> and I found Anne, I found Anne Murray. I found a Carpenters tribute band. The Carpenters. Who's, what type of crowd is a Carpenters tribute band? <laughs> who's showing up there? Just the emaciated women <laughs> binging and purging in front of the stage. <laughs> and really depressed brothers with no career left. Because oh, oh. <laughs> the talented one is dead. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. And then uh, one of the Carpenter's bands has a name. Like You'd think that the tribute bands would come up with names that are recognizable as mm -hmm. the band and kind of catchy. And what was one? The Carpenters with a K. Like, carp, yeah. like a fish. A like a carp, <laughs> the carpenters. Carp. They come enters. out big, bulgy orange eyes <laughs> <laughs> and play carpenters music. And then there's another one. What's the girl's name? Her name was Laura. Laura, so. and she's so self-centered, she wanted her name to be incorporated in the title, uh -uh. but it's carpenters. So how, how did she solve that problem? L-A-U-R-P-E-N-T-R-S. The Larpenters. Larpenters. <laughs> Boy, that just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? And they're both from the UK. Both bands are from the UK. Well, we got to listen to some of these things here. Well, yeah. track two. What do we got in here that you just handed me? The that's that's, tra that's This is the Carpenters thing. This is track two. Is uh, is close to you by the Carpenters with a K. Okay. Ah. Let's listen to this. If it cues up. All right. You guys, if you're into that, I don't know who they're attracting, like who's sitting there. I don't know, man. In the UK, evidently, the That's Carpenters still have a pretty good following. That's pretty impressive. They work. I mean, they, you know, they yeah. had a few. What happened to the punks and mods? I don't know, man. <laughs> Jeez, uh, now people there's listening to the Carpenters. Then there's I a, from uh, the who to that. Yeah, the who to that. <laughs> there's a, now the Lorpenters. There's, yeah. uh, th this is track four. Uh, we'll okay. skip Rainy Days and Mondays by the Carpenters with a K. Oh, Go to the Larpenters. It just kind of rolls off the tongue, don't it? Yeah. Uh, track number four, Close to You. The Carpenters. Sounds great. Yeah, I mean, sounds but, like but it's still the uh, yeah, where, where Carpenters. Where are they from? <laughs> were they from, like, Utah? Doesn't it sound they like got they that had to Utah be somewhere face. from the Midwest? The Osmond yeah, family face? Yeah. Definitely from uh, yeah. the Midwest from a somewhere. 35-year-old virgin. Bible I want to hear belters. some Tom Jones. Now, I hear you have a, a really bad Tom Jones. Yeah, there's a pretty bad one in here. Okay. But, uh... Let's That's hear the good. Let's hear the good one first. No, no, no. no listen, like. you got to hear the bad the one. The bad first. one, yeah, first? yeah, definitely. You want to hear the bad one first? What? What's up? He's doing the weather. Oh Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> they wow. got the. Oh, go ahead, Jim. With him, <laughs> he's poking the hurricane on the weather map. <laughs> <laughs> when is this thing supposed to happen? <laughs> 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 Rob Bartlett's yeah, yeah, fucking hysterical. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's the Brian Wilson character with the Opie and Anthony t-shirt on MSNBC. <laughs> Just standing there with an umbrella <laughs> with the hurricane in the background. When, when, is the, right. when is it supposed to hit land or any land? Uh, uh, it's supposed to uh, hit land sometime <laughs> late guys. Thursday into Friday. Right. And then southwest Florida into... Uh, Sunday and Monday. So uh, certainly a strong storm. Here's the path. Here, move out of the way of the path. This way, over here. All right, there you go. There you go. You can see uh, into Sunday morning expected to head into parts of uh, the port. Thanks for the uh, shade. There. You put the umbrella over the weather guy's so head. We could even have a third landfall with this system. So you may have to travel not only to Cancun, but to Florida and then to New England. So we'll, we'll send you there with your umbrella. All right, Jeff. Like thanks. Mary Poppins, look. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Ranieri, the NBC meteorologist. I hope that thing stays down to the south. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I oh, know. I know. That could kill me. We're I got, going to I'm, Florida. Yeah. I got, I, uh, yeah. When do you I'm leave? I'm flying out on Sunday. Oh, on Sunday, you got a problem. Yeah. I'm leaving uh, tomorrow. Yeah, no. Oh, boy. I'm I leaving Saturday. i got to get to Miami. I'm hoping that... Uh, yeah, he's leaving Miami south, on Saturday. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he might have a problem. This Hurricane Willem is fucking up our vacations. Yeah, I'm Big going to time. Albany, man. I'm really... Uh, yeah. Albany, you know? <laughs> All right, let's get back on track here. So we yeah, got we more got, tribute bands We have here. a bad a bad Tom Jones tribute from the UK. I didn't even get the guy's name, but it's uh, it's not unusual. Track 8. Oh. Track 8, okay. It's all the, uh, all the UK, huh? They're huge yeah, over there. Yeah, yep. This one is, uh... A slow. Slow and... Just sappy. Uh, it's 
live. I bet he does with the, uh, does his hip movements and girls throw underwear at him. Ah, uh, yeah. It's actually a guy called Ultra Jones. It's ultrajones.net. That's hysterical. Does the he guy look like him? Does he not, try to? Not at all. He wears a wig and he makes it like... He makes it obvious. He'll like he'll let it ride back on his head, so he's got like eight inches of forehead, and then pull it down on purpose <laughs> on the video. It's hysterical. He's like a goof on Tom Jones, but um, yeah, that's Ultra Jones. Mm -hmm. This guy is not him. Now this next one, uh, just play it. Track nine. You tell me. Oh, okay. This guy's a little more professional. Yeah. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. That's pretty good. It's not unusual to have fun with anyone. When I see you hanging about with anyone, it's not unusual to see me cry. It's like music to fuck oh, women with big muscles, too. <laughs> like old 70s. It's not yeah, dressed like Mrs. Roper. Right. <laughs> In the moo moo. <laughs> this is sexy music to them. The last, not bad. The That's last really Tom good. Jones show that I saw. You, well, you saw him recently. I went too, to right? go see Tom, jo Tom Jones in Atlantic City about a month or yeah, a month and I, a half I ago. I saw him about three months ago in Atlantic City. And the women there. Mrs. Roper is actually an improvement. Yeah, on some of the they get some I old ladies that. there that are just creaming over Tom Jones, oh. and then you get some young hot chicks that are like caught up in the moment. I guess their mothers brought them or something, yeah. and they were throwing their panties at him. And then one thing really disturbing was like on side stage, kind of uh, uh, in front of the stage, but way to the side, was a girl that had to be probably six or seven, and she's dancing, like their parents brought brought her. And she's dancing, and Tom Jones came over at one point and, like, handed her a flower. I thought you were going to say uh, she threw her panties on stage. The hotel, yeah. <laughs> little yes. underoos. The Wonder Woman underoos hits him in the face. There's, all, it, it, there's pee in him. <laughs> uh, what else you got there, Brother Joe? All right, we have, um, <clears throat> well, my ex-lead singer, Laird. Laird! Uh, good old Laird. Good Laird. All right, we got, um, we have him doing, uh, the song one. See, I always Anthony once made a comment, and he's like capitalized on this that Laird is probably one of the best singers, not just in the tribute world, but ever. I and, and think Laird has Laird's been, voice is great. He's been pounding this into the ground. Yes, he he has a spectacular voice. The problem is he sounds nothing like Bono. Well, right, and he's doing this U two thing. So. Here's a little can clip you see, of Laird. Can you see there's a little friction here? Okay. Yeah, nah, you know there's what? Laird friction's friction. over, man. Let me, no, 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 let, let, me, let me just give Joe's, a little background. Joe's uh, U2 okay. tribute band. Right. Go ahead, Anthony. Joe, uh, he was the singer in Joe's U2 uh, tribute band. But not only that, Joe and Laird's history goes back for years. When, Probably you know, 20, yeah, 20, 20 so years. years. These guys have never been able to be in a band for any length of time together. They were the Lennon and McCartney of... He's an asshole. They, right. How can that's, you be in a band with an asshole? I mean, you got you know, you to work with these people. That's what goes on. Yeah, don't you need that tension? No. And he thinks, no, you really don't. <laughs> and you guys and he thinks Joe's an asshole. I was always... The whole time I was, I was doing bands with him, I was envious of comics because... I mean, you could you could go and do your own. It's it's your own. It's you you have to deal with ninety percent of the time. You don't have to deal with you don't anyone. Have to deal with but you guys were guys. friends for a long time, right? Knowing that the other guy was an asshole. Yeah, yeah. We knew that. Yeah, you know, we were Dude, friends. Ninety percent of any band out there works like this. Yeah. They don't really enjoy each other's company. It's just you're working it together. Uh, if a band hits. Now you got to stay in it for the cash. Exactly. Uh, but these two, I mean, it was and it was all, always end this way. Joe on the phone. <laughs> Joe on the phone to me. Man, yeah, what's up? <laughs> Fucking Laird, man. <laughs> Fucking Laird. Never again. Never again. What happened? guy is a fucking dick. And, no, that's it. Joe, you know damn well, somewhere down the road, you guys are going to be in a band together. No, no, dude, I know I've said it before, but this time, no. Fuck him, never again. This is actual audio. <laughs> and let, fast forward, maybe anywhere from six months to five years later. But anywhere between there? Uh, hey, what's up? Not too much. Yeah, you're going to come down to the gig? Me and Laird are playing down at the... Laird? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I just fucking did, but, you know, I needed But a he's singer, got a voice, exactly. Got, I can fucking sing. I know? can't sing, he can't play guitar. And then fast forward again. Man, that fucking, fucking asshole. Just. Never <laughs> the fuck again will I get, even get near a stage he is on. This went on for 20 years. Well, dude, ex I mean, can can I, I don't even want to get into the reason. Well, but the, the guy's guy, a bullshit artist. The guy's uh, let's bullshit. say he can embellish a story. Yeah. Shoot the hostage. There was one. All right, right after 9-11. Now, everyone knows somebody like this. Everybody has somebody like this in their life. Uh, after 9-11, uh, Laird came into the studio one day. And uh, we were all hanging back in the office. Remember we, when we did afternoons, we'd all go back to the office, drink a little, hang out. A little. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> so uh, Laird comes back, and we're hanging out, having a good time. And uh, uh, Laird talks about how he uh, signed up to be an air marshal. So that was like the big thing that was going on then. Going to be an air marshal. Apply oh, for the oh, job. Oh, really? But this is after years of hearing Laird's, you know, stories. So you, you, we look and go, really? But there are people there that don't know Jim. You know, we know Jim, so we're like, yeah, all right, okay. here comes another one. Yeah, uh, I signed up to be an air marshal. I went down and took the test. I was like, oh, yeah, what's that all about? <laughs> well, there's some written test, and then they give you, you know, they give you a test. I go, well, what happened? He goes, well, there's certain scenarios. One was you're in the aisle of an airplane, and uh, there's a terrorist, and he grabs a hostage, and the instructor asks, okay, what do you do? And everyone had the wrong answer. So he picks at me, and I go, you shoot the hostage. <laughs> and he pointed at me and said, you're absolutely right. <laughs> and I'm just sitting well, there like... obvious if, if everyone else got the answer wrong, they were all saying shoot the saying, terrorist. shoot the terrorist or <laughs> right. trying to negotiate or anything but shoot the hostage. Right. That wasn't that the last... It was, it was, we, we go around, the me, last option. Jimmy, fucking Norton, to this day, we'll just bust shoot out, we'll be, hostage. we'll be eating dinner, and out of nowhere, Jimmy will just go, shoot the hostage. <laughs> Still, years later, it's hysterical oh, dude, to he us. he was managed by Tommy Mottola, he was managed by Roger Dalton. Yeah. He, he was going on tour with Hall and Oates, but he came down with his strep throat. I got the strep throat. Dude, the guy just bullshits It's way always like well, a huge story. Anyway, I, I, I. I I believe, and in fact, I so know. So he moved I, every on and started another it. YouTube. Yeah, now, yeah, he did. He started a new, new tribute, but I mean, for reasons I can't even get into. But it sounds it sounds like shit. It's not a good sounding YouTube tribute. Mm -hmm. But um, and trust me, Joe's not jealous because the new single no, you got I, yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah, Tommy's great. It's un. It, you guys are Tommy's the great. premier YouTube tribute band. Well, now. thank you, Ope. Um, uh, Laird sounds like fucking Cher. <laughs> no. He sounds like Cher. Now, get, just I mean, just like a little bit. Share. Track twelve is Laird singing the song One okay. by You Two. Okay. All right. Right. Have you come here for forgiveness? Have you come to raise the devil? Yeah. Have you come here to play Jesus with the lepers in your bell? Hell. Okay, 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 now go okay. Do me a favor. Go to now, I A-B'd him on track 13. I A-B'd him with Cher. So compare voices and tell me that he doesn't have Cher's singing style. <laughs> wow, they hate each other. Oh, Dude, it's not a matter of hate. It's, it's not a matter of hatred. It's 20 years ago until they go fuck themselves. It's just, That's right. I've just sat in my room and... Fucking splice the audio together. There's no vengeance. Let's see, if he can, let's see if he can go to his brother's precinct and play tapes yeah. for his friends. Uh, Joe's traveling pretty much the world with the new U2 trivia band, but he can't let this go. He will not. He just played at the Wachovia Center in front of 3,000 people at any given time, right? Good guy's a fucking asshole. <laughs> Sounds like Cher fucking dick. Exactly. And he's, he's in the same, he's being a tribute to the same band that you're doing. You fucking right. hate him. That's I can't true. wait for it. Just, just, just admit it, and then we'll play this. He's track. like a he's a, he's a hack. <laughs> you, know, you know, you understand that language. He's a hack. All right, let's. He's like the Joe Rogan of uh, the tribute band things. He's calling <laughs> out. He's correct. Hey, out. He's, he's not even Mexican. Yeah. He's fucking half German. <laughs> I'm ready to he's, jump in the fucking yeah. octagon now, man. Yeah. They call me the Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot the hostage. 
All right, so you spliced it together here, Joe? Yeah, track 13. It's just a little, uh, And you had you know, time to do this with all the comparison. dates you're Calling doing? Calling out all with, hacks. With the, well, I, was up, I was up until about 1.30 in the morning doing all this. <laughs> all, so hacks, night. all hacks must die. <laughs> right. Zero tolerance. Did you hear right. he was up until 1.30 in the morning? About 1.30 in the morning. Well, That's compiling, anger. Not compiling too obsessed this with this whole thing. thing. All right. You probably had a headshot of the guy above his computer. Here you go, you fuck. I was born in the wagon of a traveling show. My mama used to dance for the money they throw. Would do whatever he could. Okay, that was Cher. There you go. <laughs> Sounds Have like you fucking Cher. Raise the devil. Your little <laughs> of you are just really angry, Joe. <laughs> listen. <laughs> listen to Head. Wait, listen. With the levels in your bill. <laughs> what a pissed off individual. I gotta say, you're reaching a bit. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm not really hearing it. I wasn't really. I'm not really Listen hearing it as vibe. strongly as you are. It's the vibrato in his voice and just the way. And the. I don't hear it. Oh, Shoot oh. the <laughs> By the way, that was from a movie, wasn't it? Shoot the hostage thing? Yeah. It was from Speed. All right. One of those. No, the original don't. Speed. We'll shoot the hostage. Well, all right. Shoot Let, the hostage. Let's move on up. There's a, there's, yeah. a steely, there's a Steely Dan tribute out of New York called Stealin' Dan. Stealin' Dan. Stealin' Dan. It's track 14. Uh, all right. And uh, the song is Peg. Right. This is a live recording, by the way. Give them a little. That's Steely Dan. Harmony's Sounds like Cher, though. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, it's live, too. Very good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um... Uh, now uh, another another live track. This is a, a Boston tribute called "Smokin'" out of LA. Boston. Very difficult. The guy's range very is ridiculous. Difficult. Yeah, Bradley. Bradley Del Delp. You know Bradley Delp. I sang with Bradley Delp uh, once right. up in Boston. You sure did. Yes, Anthony. I did. <clears throat> yes, I did. Thank um, you. The name you of the band is Throat, right? Right, I had the strep throat. I was supposed to actually be the singer from Boston. You were supposed to go on tour with but Boston. I, but I got the strep throat. And then uh, somebody actually on a plane grabbed the gun and put it to Bradley Delp's head. <laughs> and I pulled out my gun and I shot... Uh, Bradley Delp, which is why that third do. album was delayed for so right. long. Right, but it's what you do. <laughs> Wait, you know, the <laughs> phones... My training kicked in. The phones are all over, Joe. Let's go to Mike in California. Uh -huh. Mike? Yeah, how you guys doing? Hey, good. Hey, I just wanted to support Brother Joe there. I can hear the share and the guy he hates. I can hear the resemblance. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Let's say hi to Steve in Maryland. Steve? Hey, what's up? What's up? Oh, uh, man, it was a great, I'm let, it was let, a great let, line, too. He said, <laughs> stayed up until 1.30. When did he start? 1.25? Oh. <laughs> and then Mike from Whackbag, Brother Joe is a quivering, angry ass. <laughs> <laughs> Rob in New York. Yeah, Brother Joe's right on. It certainly sounds like Cher. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where is coming to New York, Joe? Wow, uh, he's playing the Halloween party for us. Yep. October right, 31st. There? October 31st Hard at Rock. the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, I don't think we're going to get Brother Joe's U2 tribute band again after this. Oh, no. yeah. You're just blowing up way too much. We're not no. going to be able Joe to afford him, Anthony. <laughs> Joe in Jersey. What's up, fellas? Joe, the guy isn't saying the lyrics right. He's saying lepers in your bed. He's not even saying the lyrics right. Oh, he still reads off the of cue cards, too. That's embarrassing. Yeah, it is. It's horrible. Yeah. That's, why, that's why I got rid of him. Fucking singers. That's right. You know, Bono reads off cue cards. Right. That's the only reason I do it. <laughs> so we're doing um, the Boston thing? Yeah, I want to yeah, hear the, Bradley uh, Delp. You know what? You might want to, uh, if you can fast forward in, into the track toward the end of this, uh -oh. of this tra of track number 15 is the better stuff. It's, it, That's I mean, hard. It does, it's a medley, but it takes like a three, 
Yeah, it's like a three-minute medley. Or Whenever something. Opie's got a fast forward. So how far you want me to go? Um, about halfway through it. Track 15. Let's try this. Yeah. on that guy's Try voice. That. Holy shit. Try How that do people up. sing that Not high? Here. No. kick him in the fucking balls. I can sing. Like Cher. That's smoke. <laughs> yeah, right. That's smoking yeah, a Boston walk, tribute. Though, right? nah. uh, that music makes me want to kill myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that classic rock. Well, yeah. This will really hurt you then. Um, hold on, hold on. Bingo Pants from Whack Bag. Bingo Pants. Brother Joe, I just want to let you know, I heard Laird on another radio show. He's calling himself the Punisher. <laughs> the Punisher? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Joe? <laughs> the, um... The B threes, they're at, they're from Australia, and it's a Bee Gees tribute. Okay. Bee Gees, yes, and uh, they're quite excellent. I mean, for 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 the Bee Gees, if you can, you know, I mean, that's okay. I understand <laughs> some Bill, relax. Bill Burr is just like, I hate this fucking music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you listen to, Bill? What, what type of music do you like? Well, not that Richard shit. Pryor. No, yeah. <laughs> what do you, what music do you listen to? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? No. You do when you hear no. it, you know you like it. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, 37, I don't have, like, a favorite band with, like, a fucking no. poster in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> asking if you had posters. You could still have a favorite like, band at 37, but no, the I mean, poster I thing know. went away a long dude, time ago. Uh, any, out, any shit. Anything Comics are good. too self-centered to no- notice anything else. No, like you any- know, that's not yeah. true. Uh, uh, yeah. No! Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that dude, Common, has a, a song that I like. Yeah. Uh, on the corner. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I mean, I don't shit. I Comics just, are just too busy. Yeah. No, you know what you it guys is? Are this is my thing. I'm totally into fucking music, but the second you ask me, what what do you listen to? I can't, I can't remember. I don't yeah. know. Right, how about I like Primus. For long. I'm into drummers, man. I'm Primus. frustrated Primus. Drummers, yeah. so I like, I like Tim Alexander. Uh, you like Rush? No. Oh, you better say yes. You better say yes. No, I don't know. Rock Cafe. Oh, no. Night. I just never got into them. Yeah. Dude, well, what the fuck? I mean, somebody has to not like them. I mean, they, they still fill giant stadium, right? Of course. Good point. It's Good like point. Bruce Springsteen. I never got into that guy. And <laughs> fucking 80,000 people show up to see him. How many whoa, Bruce tribute whoa, bands whoa. are there? Probably a lot, right? A lot. I, I actually did some research on the uh, the bands that we have playing on Halloween. There are ACDC tops it out with 63 tributes registered on TributeCity.com. Most yeah. tribute bands are ACDC tribute yeah. bands? Yep, wow. 63. Um, then you have 58 uh, U2 tribute bands oh, worldwide, shit. and uh, I think it was something like uh, 32 Rush tribute bands. Wow. wow. Yeah. All right. What do we got next here? Okay, we have um, the B3s. It's track 16. These guys are from Australia, and they're, they're, uh, they, do the, they do the job well. <laughs> oh, no. Another live tape of Wow. Who sees this though? <laughs> Who would go and watch this? You know what this reminds me of? After I did some horrible casino gig 
<laughs> and I'm walking around, no chick. And I just go into the lounge next door, and this band is fucking playing. I'm just like, I thought this was going to be so glamorous when I started telling yeah. jokes. It just makes me want to kill Dude, myself. you know what it feels like oh, to be man. that lounge band? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they're pretty good, though. Right? Yeah, they they it down. If you're into the Bee Gees, they, they nail it. They have it down. Um, they nail it. Um, the, uh, this, <laughs> this, uh, this one is probably the best that I found out of this whole batch. Track 17, um, a band called Oliver's Army. It's an Elvis Costello tribute. Elvis Costello. This guy, Yeah, but this guy is... Probably even better than the uh, than the than the good Tom Jones. <laughs> better than the good Tom Jones. Jones. Say better That's than actually Elvis. how he sells himself. I'm, <laughs> I'm better, better than, than the good <laughs> Tom Jones. It's on his website. <laughs> how does he like tribute? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, Tributes to like comedians. Yeah, why can't you? There are. Just there are. People there are. just going up doing their acts. Dude, I'm telling you, I sent a link. There are. To um, I sent a link to uh, to Steve. Uh, what? Yeah, Carlos Mencia. Carlos Mencia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who's that guy? He was Chris from Tribute Lime to Lime Joe Rogan. Oh, hey guys. Yeah. Tribute to I listen Joe to the show way too much. I'm sorry. That's, that's cool. right. Yeah, Big fan. Chris I called in about the... Uh, is this... Um, that's Bill Burr. Bill no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, no yeah. This is uh, the third guy from Van Halen, right? Yes. Uh, Sammy, Sammy, no, no, no. I'm Sammy, Sammy Hagar. Sharon. I'm right. Sammy Hagar. No, he's Sammy, no, he's Sammy Hagar. He, I know, he I know. Out. I'm serious. Gary Sharon is Bob Kelly. <laughs> and you're the lead singer of Livewire? Yeah. Yes. I'm the, and he's I'm playing the, the Halloween party as well. Yes, he is. Are you Brian nice. Johnson or Bon Scott? I both. am both. He's nice. both, and he I'm does proud both of it. extremely well. Do we have a sample of your stuff here? I'd like yeah. to know a guy that I mean that can actually talk after singing like that. You know? <laughs> Live wire. Could actually carry on a conversation and not just have, like, blood spurting out of their throat. <laughs> well, there's a thing called throat coat that helps us all out. Yeah? Is that what you use? Yeah, got to. Okay, so what do we got, Joe? We have uh, Oliver's Army. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an Elvis Costello tribu a tribute uh, out of Texas. Texas? Okay. Yeah, guys from Texas. And, uh, that amazing. guy does sound good. Yeah, it's amazing, yeah, brother Joe. Guy's, guy's really good. Um, a, uh, a, couple of, a couple of Sinatras. Yes, uh, Billy? I'm going to say natural light spread out across your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Some awful cheap beer. <laughs> Pull tabs. <laughs> Sounds like you've been there. Milwaukee's I best. I've already been. <laughs> oh, that's good. And now, I want to hear the uh, Sinatra. Yeah, you can have a Midwest accent and pull off Sinatra. Is it Midwest or the, like Chicago? The guy's from Is Cleveland, that? Ohio. Ohio? Ohio. Hey there. So he's doing "Fly Me to the Moon." Fly me to the moon. No, not even. Yeah, yeah it's 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 his R's. He said, you know, I mean, Frank Sinatra kind of skipped over the R's, like New oh, York. New York yeah. is in New like Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. And uh, and uh, there you go. It's track to nineteen. the though. moon. It's still not bad. Yeah, it's though. not bad. It's not bad. But, uh, this guy's. The next guy's. Did a little he bad. ever that play was, in your band? Was, no. Yeah, that's scumbag. Tom Toronto. That was Tom Torato. You shoot the hostage. Shoot the hostage, baby. The keyboardist in this next band. <laughs> like little scumbag. You know, the bands are, for how much the comics, like, fucking rag on each other and everything, bands Just are the bad. worst because it's this fucking, like, uh, gang. Uh, they've, they're, they've all fucked each other over in some way, Dude, shape, or guys, form. I have a question so they all know each do you other. Guys, do, you, do you have, like, comics that underbid you? Comics that suck. And they go in for way less money than you're used to getting, and they like they they swipe gigs out from under you. I mean, is that is that Sounds something like that goes a on a corporate often? gig thing? No, nah, yeah, that's more like uh, just if you. That's if, more I like guess a it, band thing. Yeah, that doesn't really happen as comedians. Yeah, it's yeah. just that's like that's what I mean, man. I, if, if they I wish I was funny. If they under Fuck guitar, <laughs> I wish I was funny. So you got bands that <laughs> undercut you to get into some of the spots you were going oh, yeah. into? Yeah. Wow. Always, always. Chris knows about it. Yeah, we, got, we undercut him one time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> knows about it. it happens, man. I want to play some live wire, but I don't, uh, we just have the CD. So yet. what does he do? He gets on the sample. phone and just goes, hey, the guy's pretending to be the carpenter, said they'll do it for 800 bucks. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how it happens. Pretending to be. You know what, man? It always, it always comes around, uh, though. Jesus Christ. It turns out to be the uh, the club owner that suffers. I mean, they you know, they put shit bands in. They have no turnout. And then they end up calling me back. So You whatever. shoot the club owner. <laughs> shoot the club owner. Did you ever see a uh, uh, cookie jar in uh, Las Vegas? No. You never seen that guy? No. He's like doing almost like a parody of a lounge singer, but he's got the hair 
Ah, and he's uh, got an awful just jet nice shoe hay. polish in his hair <laughs> <laughs> coming down, and he knows he's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. So it actually it makes it uh, quite enjoyable. Cookie jar, huh? Cookie jar. Oh, it's cookie <laughs> jar. jar. Yeah. Now it's hysterical. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> right. I well, there was know. a guy I just sent the link over. A guy that does a Rodney Dangerfield uh, tribute. He actually, he's another one with a wow. fucking Midwest accent that does a Rodney Dangerfield tribute. I have it. I, I sent Say, the link to Steve. That's what it's going to be. When the comics died. die, then you can do yeah, tributes. Yeah, then you can do tributes to him. Red Fox is dead, right? Is Red Fox dead? Uh, I think so. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah, yeah Jesus yeah. Christ. You look at me like I should fucking know. Well, we got to see. Well, I mean, it wasn't like he was just only a comedian. I mean, he was a star of Sanford and Son. Yeah, 1975? He's what? been dead probably a decade, Ant. Sorry. I'm thinking. <laughs> I want to hear the Rodney Dangerfield thing now. Nipsey Russell just passed on. Now I know. That was Steve's recently in the news. I sent it over to Steve. going to see a He's Nipsey Russell it. tribute come up <laughs> with all those little rhymes. Um, all right, where are we going, Joe? Yeah, we got, um, well, this, this, other, uh, this other Frank Sinatra guy, this Frank Holden. Sinatra. Uh, lady is a tramp. He uses chick way too much. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you're supposed to you use are it for uh, uber critical, for aren't you? you? Really? Are. No, you're supposed to use you're it for studying effect. these guys. We he were talking so about this on the way in. Because the first wasn't that bad. No, but this guy, this guy actually, his voice is probably a little closer. Yeah. Uh, what track? The problem uh, was he, he didn't so say "Lady's a Tramp" at all. He just kept saying, "This chick is this a tramp." Chick <laughs> is a tramp. Ah. Red Fox died in 1991. Oh, he did. <laughs> Fuck you, Ben. <laughs> She gets hungry <laughs> for dinner at eight. All right, this guy sucks. Yeah. She likes the like theater, but don't come late. She'd never bother with anyone she'd hate. That's why this chick, she's a tramp. This tramp, tramp, yeah. Yeah, I didn't get that either. She nah. don't this like guys from the UK. With parents and earths. That's why the bird is a tramp. Won't yeah. go to Harlem's <laughs> bird. Dressed <laughs> in ermine and park. That guy's a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's on the dole. <laughs> um, you limey cunt. We got a sample of Live Wire in uh, 2112. I'd love to... Yeah, I'd like to do that. So which one? I mean, I'd which track, Chris, off the uh, CD? The one I gave you? You know, one uh, that you burned? Any obscure actually, shit? Yes. Actually, uh, it's LA in a bad place to be. Listed, we right? do have the AHA tribute band uh, as we try to. Oh, yeah. but let's try the AHA. Uh, yeah. yeah, we started this conversation we with got the AHA in the tribute teeth. band. We nice. Yeah. Oh, see, he likes ACDC at least. Off of Pow Powerage. It's the bed of Second side. All over that. That's that's great, but it's one yeah, song. Yeah, one song. Yeah, and done. We gotta dress like a pirate. <laughs> Got all the ruffle stuff in front of your shirt. It's a five-minute show. Isn't that Adam Ant? Adam oh, Ant is he the one to dress like? Yeah. He's got a tribute too. Yeah. He's got a tribute. He's got uh, Adam Ant has a couple of tributes on uh, Tribute oh, City. Oh, sure he does. Yeah. Hysterical. Uh, which one are we playing? Goody Goody Two Shoes and uh, the one that says Live Wire on it. Live Wire? Uh, yep. We're trying to. Uh, we ran out of the studio to try to find it. Got track. Anthony with the uh, Twenty One Twelve stuff. I, I saw one tribute band. I saw Physical Anthony. Graffiti years ago. Are they yes. still around? Yes. Yes. They're around. They nope. work a lot too. Now mm -hmm. there's now there's Bono right there. Yeah. yeah. Looks yeah. a lot more like Bono than Laird ever did. <laughs> are they? Are Laird they? looked like he ate Bono. <laughs> oh, he looks like Laird. You saying? Oh. No, no. But it, there's no animosity. None. None whatsoever. <laughs> none. I've seen it for years. I always, between those I always forget your name because I always just want to say, hey, Bono, because he looks just like him. Tom. I saw I saw these guys at BB Kings. We talked about it on the radio. It was unbelievable. After the U2 show, I figured I'd just go in and support Brother Joe and the U2 tribute band, and I ended up staying for the entire set. I was so into it. Uh, what would you rather? What would you want to play, Anth? What track? 
This is uh, Anthony from 2112. Another band that will be playing at the Halloween party at the Hard Rock Cafe. Yeah. We want the hits. <laughs> we need a hit. This is radio. <laughs> we only play the hits. Tom Sawyer. We can do uh, Spirit Radio. All right, what track is that? That's a hit. Uh, us is on nine. Rush is on ten. So if you want to. Oh, wow. Oh, he, oh. he beat it. Whoa. He stayed up until well, yeah, 1.30 yeah, in the morning, too. Wow. Wow, he's feeling Balls. confident. So, uh, which one is you? Nine? Nine is it. All right, so let's start with the, the Spirit of Radio by Rush, which is Rush. ten, right? This is Live Rush? Live Rush. Okay. All right, that's Rush. Well, that's Rush. That's really Rush. That's really Rush. And now this is uh, 2112 doing the same song. Did he do it? Oh, that was really Rush. Oh, that was really Rush That was a live. tribute band. Like, no, that's why I was laughing at you, buddy. I thought, right? it, I thought he was pulling the old, no, wait, that was us. <laughs> that old, would have been cool to do. Old, yeah, 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 that. that would have been great to do. Too many people would know. The old <laughs> switcheroo. So, uh, okay, that was really Rush. And now this is 2112, and these guys will be at the Halloween party. Yep. <laughs> Like Getty, that's uh, that's amazing, absolutely amazing. Sounds like Getty. Obviously, um, Rush able to get a better live recording. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have any uh, studio stuff on there? Yet? Their equipment. Yeah, I have some studio. A little stuff better. On there. Put, put, yeah, one of the studio tracks. That's only a 35 second. That's uh, seven, seven and eight. We're on seven. All right, we're on seven. Okay, this is 2112. Come on. That's you? Oh, I wanted to hear the chorus on that. Oh. I know, that's that. Uh, the track ends right there. That's yeah. you singing that? Yeah. That's amazing. Thanks. How does that happen, man? You just sing it one day and somebody say, you know who you sound like? <laughs> and then you just, you just go down that road? Yeah, that's, that's about it. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Doing it. That's really amazing. Thanks a lot. Wow. All right. Well, these guys will be at the Halloween party, 2012. Yeah. Along with Brother Joe's U2 tribute band, and of course Live Wire. We want to play some Live hey, Wire too. Yeah, I think he's gonna grab Sin City off of our uh, BB King's recording. All right, let's hear this. Oops. Uh oh. You can't say fuck on the radio. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was. What happened, Hawk? Of course you can say fuck. I don't know what happened over there. What happened there, Hawk? Well, you guys gave us a DVD, so we're yeah, trying to figure I'm out sorry. how to play it on the radio here. It's in the PlayStation. It's it, it's frozen. I'm old Ooh. school. The only thing I have is cassette, and I gave it to Brother Joe last night. Cassette. Oh, <laughs> remember that? <laughs> remember those? Oh I got God. like 20 dats. I didn't know which one was the right one. I didn't want to give you some other's band. Uh, right, got we'll, it on laser disc. <laughs> all right, we'll try to figure it out. The PlayStation, by the way, sucks for playing DVDs. I hate no, that. In the meantime, yeah. you might want to uh, try some to you. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Track ten. Track ten. Track ten. Track ten. No, just so a who's little, the drummer supposed to be? Tease. Is it Phil Rudd, Chris Slade, or Simon Wright? And he's oh, still wow. Rudd. My buddy yeah. Bill there. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's Phil Rudd. Rudd. Oh, Phil Rudd. Okay. We, we, Bill honestly, we're more of a, we're right. a big Bon Scott band, but we would have to do a lot of Brian, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. But uh, all of us in our hearts are 
loving Bonk. Bonk's oh, yeah. got a lot more. All right, here's nah, to finish this segment up about tribute bands. Right up the flick of the switch, mm-hmm. I like them. If we get the live wire, off a razor edge, we're all right. If we get the live wire thing working, we'll play a sample of that after the break. But uh, here's Brother Joe's U2 tribute band playing the Halloween party at the Hard Rock Cafe Halloween night. Yeah. Let's say hi to Mike. What's up, Mike? Hey guys, what's going on? Ah, uh, we're hanging out. Hey, I'm uh, I'm actually a studio uh, guitarist. And I'm I'm amazed. Like I know Bono's always the focus of every tribute, you know, YouTube tribute band, but Joe, man, you are you are incredible. I mean, they, oh, you don't know how tough that really is. Thanks a lot, dude. It's um, yeah, it takes a little time to tweak, you know. Yeah, I mean, how many how many pedals do you run with? Uh, one. It's a uh, Korg AX 1500G. It does everything. It's a one. Uh, multi effect. Yeah, cool. All right, man. Good luck at the show. Thanks a lot, brother. I was going to guess that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Five people out there just went, oh. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. oh I'm just looking. Right. I'm just waiting. Uh, all I want is Korg to be listening. That's yeah. all. Korg, Korg, I just want Korg to be listening. Get that uh, I need eight more of deal. them, please. Eight more what? Eight more Korg AX1500Gs. Thank you. Why? Are they good? Yeah, they're great. Korg they're is great. They the do best. the job. They do it excellently. Right. They do an excellent right. job. Maybe uh, somebody when will Brother Joe to wants to become U2, he reaches for <laughs> <Right>. a Korg <laughs> AX1500G. <laughs> All right, we got the guy on the line that did the assault on the media last night, so we're going to we're gonna try to move on here. But first, uh, we're going to try the live wire thing. Yeah, again. see if this works. Our now. live wire, Hawk, another band work. playing the Halloween party, Halloween night at the Hard Rock Cafe. Here's a sample. On beta. Live from BB Kings. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good. I'm That's glad fair. we played the hit like I asked for, Eric. Thanks. What do you want? Hell's uh, Bells? <laughs> uh, I Hell's mean, Bells is up it, it helps with the... Hey, what are you doing? You can't get the With lyrics. the casual fans. That's like, what all. What does he say there in the middle of that? Love. <laughs> and, snakes. and snakes. What does he say? Ladders? Yeah. Ladders give. What are ladders? Like what you climb up? Don't ask me. Any the guy's dead. System. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, he can't ask. You can't even ask him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just mumble it. Yeah, right. Ladders. Uh, and snakes. That's Let's, pretty good. He's pretty good. Yeah. You want a gig? Huh? You want a gig? <laughs> <laughs> My pod Scott and Jerry Lewis. Are the exact same. Hey, ladies. <laughs> Ladders. I, I, I was asking for a hit, so we had a whole lot of Rosie up there. Yeah. Thunderstruck. We had uh, Shoot the Thrill, <laughs> Hell's Bells. <laughs> And what was the other one over there on the highway to hell? Highway, highway to hell. hell, and he picks Sin City. <laughs> no, Bill Burr wanted Holy Sin City. Shit! That's Thanks, the Bill. The real oh, music. Bill. That's for the real. term you don't know music. That's for the real. I'm trying to help Live Wire out over here. You know, if you worked at the home of rock and roll five times, you would have known music. That's right. I've worked at three homes of rock and roll. I know my music. I'm trying to help the band out. Playing a That's hit. why every time we got some ACDC coming up, they always play. But uh, I understand that. But that see, what shook me all night long. Uh, oh, if Jesus. I ever hit, that's like the fucking. But uh, I'm doing that four times at the, ho- at, uh, the hard rock. Of, of fucking. But We're I only think they, ACDC. But I think there's a lot of people with me out there. If they, if, if they want to listen to hacks, live, and they don't deserve to go to the show. They want, <laughs> all right, if you don't know what fucking Sin City is, want, stay home. They want to hear a hit from Live Wire just so they can compare it to the actual ACDC. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Am I stupid for thinking that? Nope. Which one do you want to hear, Anthony? Now you play. Uh, hit. 
Thunderstruck. Uh, I want to hear Highway to Hell. Highway to Hell. There That's you go. Hilarious. Yeah. I was like totally getting into it. Like, yeah, Power Ridge, second, <laughs> second I know, side man. You for were, a you song. Were, you were drumming and you were hitting every single drum. I just want every to, accent. I want to just single. drive the Big point issue. home Big, that Live Big, Wire issue. sounds a lot like ACDC. And right. I think this is the way we do it right here. Ready to play that, Eric? You're actually right. And I apologize, to Eric. I didn't know it was a Bill Burr uh, request. We got to go into your iPod. I want to see what you're listening to. Okay. You got it here? Yeah. All right. We'll do that a little later on the show. Uh oh. Oh boy. Now actually, yeah, Chris. I could get embarrassing. Chris is now playing Football. cross country as uh, you know, doing doing the ACDC thing. Yeah. He's uh, he's all over the place, man. You're you're like bi coastal now. You're you're playing out in. Uh, I just want my guys out there from Livewire to realize that I didn't bring that up. You did, Joe. Oh, oh okay. boy. <laughs> it's a point of contention that I'm in two ACDC bands uh -oh. now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you are. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Oh, yeah. oh boy. That's not good. Well, but, no, they don't. They don't. Oh, boy. They don't intermingle. One's, you know, yeah, one coast. Like, that would be a problem. There we go. It's like having two girlfriends. You keep them. Like, it's a fifty-mile rule. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. We all can relate to that. Uh, Anything, uh huh? There you go. All right, here we go. This will drive the point home, Bill. <laughs> 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 the best part here, man, the audience starts singing the whole song. Look at uh, those yeah. people. It was crazy that night. I got through still just watching it again. Gee. <laughs> and the DVD is uh, freaking out there. Oh, of course. Hawk, so. you want to roadie that? you got to remember, it's a 70s band, so DVD's not done. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, you got it. DVD doesn't pick up the music of a 70s band. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Live wire, of course. Uh, yeah. Outstanding. Um, ACDCTributeBand.com. And for anybody up in Vermont this weekend, we are at Cousins in Bar or Barry, however you guys want to say it. Up there. Audio Slave, I like. No, I'm trying to remember my iPod. Thanks for stepping on my ship, though. <laughs> You're better. Is, he's fighting back now. I love it. If there's any Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. on there, you're in trouble, my friend. I did sprain my neck I earlier when you made a Fine Young Cannibals uh, reference. <laughs> you were talking about, like, current oh. music, and you said Fine Young Cannibals. No, no, let no, you no. Slide on I that was one. saying that having... Elvis come to the White House in yeah. 1972 to get yeah. the kids off of drugs like they still looked <laughs> yeah. up to him was like Bush now getting, getting the least young, yeah okay, find no, young right, cannibals to be hip and I made you explain it and it does work and I'm sorry all, all right, right. Live you, wire. you know what <laughs> thank you it's about time I've been here all day I've heard, heard it once and you were right about Sin City that was fun I was being an ACDC snob and I apologize <laughs> and we love snobs like you Bill Burr <laughs> My space. All right. Uh, <laughs> we also have a... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Anthony, you want to plug your website, man? Yeah, let's get the plugs in. It's a Rush Tribute Band 2112.com. Very good. Thanks. All right. And Brother Joe. And Joe, of course. Uh, of course, not you too. Dot com. Not This weekend, YouTube. we will be in Hoboken at the Whiskey Bar on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And on Friday night, we're in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania at Shimsa. Oh, huh? Which is a it's an Irish uh, Irish pub. Oi, oi, an Irish pub. The yeah, don't word you spreads know. around those Irish I pubs, and they're all. Called... <laughs> I, get calls, I get calls. I get calls from fifty Declans a week. <laughs> Hello, it's Declan. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> And they, yeah, they're always All right. And we'll see you guys at... Right, gentlemen, thank you. Very good. Yeah, guys, thanks for having us on. Absolutely. It's always Wire, fun. 2112. Thank you for being so tolerant, Bill. And to you. Oh, no Appreciate problem. it, man. Thank you for being a snob. See you, uh, oh, no. you, being an <laughs> see you on <laughs> Halloween. Snob. At the big bash, at the big swarm. Yeah, looking thanks, forward man. to it. Later oh, yeah, here's some gifts that you can't smash, Opie. I'm sorry. A t shirt. Well, I, I know it's a gay t shirt and all, but. Uh, Let me see. Uh oh. Let and, me see. and Anthony can wax right, right, his cool. escalade. I, I'll wax the escalade with it with the <laughs> live wire t shirt. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. That's good. Yeah, Thanks, guys. It's got a chamois like quality yes, to it. it I like that. It's 100% cotton. It won't leave any swirls. Okay. 
like, I, like that. I, I feel like that? a cheap bastard. I've never brought I'm anything in for these guys. I got a cassette yeah, and then I got T-shirts, and that's nice. all I got. <laughs> all right, we got to say hi Thank to the guy boys. that did the assault on the media on Thank Channel Seven last night. Thanks, Thanks, man. There they go. Oh, this is the guy that did the uh, assault. Yeah, Wheel in New Jersey. Oh, so. Wheel. Hey, what's up? What's, what's up, guys? What's up, Wheel? Wheel. How much, man? You, Wheel. You really, you, you really, really impressed us last night. Yeah, I don't know uh, how this is going to turn out, though, guys. Uh, they were uh, mighty mad. They were mighty, mighty mad. mad. Hold on, Brother yeah. Joe is now whispering to Anthony as we try to do a live show. Hey, just shaking hands shaking to go. Shaking hands. He's we know out. you love us. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do the official. All right, here we go. There you go. A little fist for Joe. Okay. I'll call you later, man. Thanks, Brother Joe. Yep. Now, what didn't work out well for you, sir? Um. Well, I haven't had an opportunity to see the tape yet. Um. He uh, was saying after I did it, he got all mad and stuff, and. Uh, I was just kind of hanging out in Channel 2. It was right down the street, getting ready to do another one. So I was like, all right, I'll hit that other one. And then the woman starts screaming bloody murder from Channel 2, saying, you better stay the hell away from me and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden I turn around and the cops are standing there. Yeah, this and, thing uh, is really taking on a life of its own. It really is this assault on the media. They're on to us big time. But... Uh, when they were talking to the reporter from 7, was talking to the newsroom. And he goes, where are you from? I said, what do you mean, where am I from? He goes, Opie and Anthony, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, to, and he was talking to producers. They knew all about it. Oh, really? They knew it, they knew it was coming. He said, oh, I'm going to get the lawyers involved, and you assaulted me. I haven't seen the tape. I didn't touch him. I know I didn't touch him. All right. Assaulted Well, him. they're not going to do anything, or they, they would have they right. done something already. Don't you oh, worry. Exactly. Exactly. I'm not. Hello? <laughs> they're... <laughs> They're just uh, trying to scare you so other people don't do this. Do this. But as uh, as long as you don't touch the reporters and assault the reporter, you're okay. He assaulted you, my friend. He pushed you right out of the camera. That's, that's what I said to the nice officers. I got to give a shout out to my buddies up where I was. I'm not going to go into it, but uh, okay. They uh, they helped me out up there. All right. Well, your video is up on opianthony.com. But walk us through the one you did for uh, Channel Seven there. I was I was standing right across the street at the hospital, and I'm looking. And my buddy called me. He was like, they're live, but they always go to that tape, and I didn't want to blow it on the first one. Mm -hmm. Oh, so taking I, your advice, Anthony. Yes. Absolutely. you got to wait for the second one because they got nowhere to go. Right. So I walked up, and I'm about four foot away, and I saw him stop talking, so I just turned around and walked away. I'm having a cigarette, and all of a sudden I looked, and he picked up the microphone, and I walked right over and just walked right up next to him. And I was like, hey, how you doing? You listen to OPS the next time? And he just looked at me, and he put his arm on my chest. And he kept talking. You know what? I'll give him credit. He did. He, I was right in his face, as you could tell. And he kept talking. And as soon as it ended, he turned around. He's like, "What the fuck's wrong with you?" I was hoping the camera was still on, but he was, he was, he was really fucking pissed. It was great. We gotta get the. We gotta have these guys like somehow have some another friend filming yeah, it, like filming somebody it. said the other day, so you can start getting these. Uh, I would love to see the other angle. I was, yeah. I was gonna bring a video camera with me and videotape me doing him, but I didn't think it was gonna work out too well. So Man, I if the guy that the did the time. attack held a camcorder, that would be great. The uh, pest eye view. Yeah, Buffalo Paul has done that in the past. It works out pretty well. Yeah, so. yeah I thought that would be pretty cool, but uh, no, it worked out alright. I ended up getting my car towed, but... <laughs> Why? Because you know, I left so quick out of the house, I forgot to grab my license, and the cops was like, hey, where's your stuff? And I was like, oh, I uh, don't have it. So uh, they they towed my car, but it was cool. I had my girlfriend come pick me up. And towed your I'll go. car for not having your license on you? License registration order. Raped him with a plunger. Oh, <laughs> and you yeah, so. you took our advice. You engaged the reporter in a little conversation. Mm -hmm. I t I tried the guys. You know, we've done the air horns, the costumes. Now the latest thing is to just kind of engage the the reporter as he's trying to do yeah, his you live stand report. next to him, just have a little chit chat. A little chit chat. Yeah, absolutely. Let's Let's go yeah, to your audio. The video is up on opianthony.com, but listen to this. Okay. The search dogs actually missed the 10-year-old boy the first time they went by that house. Don't know if that matters now. He's a little dehydrated with a few cuts and bruises, but he'll be okay. We're live in Perth Amboy tonight with some company. Jeff Begay's Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Everybody's celebrating out there. Jeffrey, thank you. Everybody's celebrating out no, there. Oh, no. That guy's not celebrating. That's a pest. <laughs> That's this a guy, pest. Yeah. This pest. <laughs> Oh, man. We think uh, you might be in the lead, Wheel. Maybe. Wow, that'd, that'd be great. Uh, it, it could go either way, but we we like the, the subtle approach that you took, and I think you might be the new leader in the Assault on the Media Contest for October. Might Excellent, guys. We, we have to Excellent. kind of study the tapes yeah, that's uh, a after hard the show. One. It, yeah. It's definitely hard. <laughs> it's got to be judged on a whole I, I'd other thing. I like the other dude having the presence of mind to jump on either side of the person's shoulders. Yeah, that was really the, good. the shrill. 
yeah. in his voice. Yelling. He's pulling, out, pulling his hair. Pulling out his hair. Yep. Like he's pulling his hair out. All yep. right, guys, I, I got I to get this truck inspected. I'll talk to you later, man. All right. Thank you, Wheels. No problem. Or Wheel, whatever. Okay. All right. You guys, you guys suck. All right, there he goes, Wheel. Wheels. Helping out the show. Got a cool nickname and everything. Definitely. Hey, Wheels. The video's up on yeah, Opie and Anthony. 1955. Yeah. They call me Sticks. <laughs> I play the drums. Oh, God. Fucking fucking JP from BAB. Listening to our show a little too closely. Jesus uh -oh. All right, stop, JP. You're embarrassing yourself. Oh, no. Guy used to work for me. He's an intern, and now he does mornings at BAB, and... He basically did our There's No Santa bit and got some coverage on that. And now he's doing the whole 2 million, the Doppler 2 million bit. No way. Yeah, he is. The Doppler 2 million? JP, you're going to hear this later because you listen to the replay. Stop. Does he call stop. himself the Punisher? Stop, JP. Stop. Stop. No, that's, you know, because I heard that Doppler 2 million bit uh, on a different station before I brought it in. So <laughs> they are bringing... Just stop, JP. Please. Uh, Steve came up with this thing as far as the assault on the media contest goes. Mm -hmm. Breaking news now. Listeners of XM Satellite Radio's Opie and Anthony program have taken the radio show's assault on the media promotion to a disturbing new level. Originally, fans of the two radio hosts have been tormenting television news reporters. Recently, a rogue faction of fans calling themselves pests has taken the promotion one step further. And some are saying too far. A pizzeria in Staten Island, New York was struck last week. Yo, you got too much of Ricotta in the car. Oh, oh. Opie and Anthony XM Satellite Radio. Opie and Anthony XM Satellite Radio. What the fuck is your problem? Meanwhile, in a hospital delivery room in Duluth. Congratulations, Mrs. Phelps. You got a brand new baby. Opie and Anthony! Whoopsie. And in a confessional booth in Boston, Massachusetts. Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been six weeks since I listened to Opie and Anthony on XM Satellite Radio. ONA Party Rock, XM 202. In your face, Father. Ew, what the Christ is your problem, man? And finally, in a Parkway rest area in New Jersey. for sure where these so-called pests will strike next. But one thing is certain, the opium anthem virus is spreading. <laughs> Jesus, Steve. <laughs> you got a new name over the top, Steve. <laughs> Was that a promo for an assault on the media? Why were they in an emergency room? No, see, they're taking the concept to the next level. And oh, just, now oh, they're just assaulting. Assaulting everything. Everything. Right. All over oh, the place. Oh, my God. This assaulting a... society in general. Right, Steve? Right. That's this the a... concept? Yeah. The con I like when Steve uh, explains the concepts after we play these things. Right. Yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, yeah, after I get it. <laughs> after I, I've been... After, after explain I've, the concept of the latest uh, promo you just made. The concept was actually brought to me by... Quiet. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> <laughs> That was Eric's idea. Oh, he, my God. Look, he instantly, like, no, 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 he no. doesn't see us going, wow, oh, my God, that is the funniest thing that really good. No, We're no. asking a couple of questions about it, so he instantly goes, that was Eric's idea. <laughs> the former no. head of FEMA is going to be coming to here apologizing. Yeah. <laughs> I did no, the I best don't wanna... job I thought I could do. Even if you guys were jerking off all over it, I'd be, I, I'd still give credit to Eric. So, um, uh, his, his concept was... Uh, pests would be like assaulting the other XM channels, I think. Like, so you'd hear like an XM jock singing a song. So we tried that a little bit and it died after like 15 seconds. Boring! Yeah, we couldn't go anywhere with it. So we, we sat around and said, well, all right, well, where, where wouldn't you have an assault in the media? You know, and so all of a sudden we're like, restaurant. Where wouldn't you? Yeah. Was this a brainstorming meeting? It was. And I was like bringing sit together and go, all right, here's a list. Yeah. Yeah. Of places was, you wouldn't want somebody shouting out ONA and party. What run. were some of the places suggested, but you didn't go there? Get um, it. We didn't go with. I'm trying to think because there were so many ideas. Oh, so many. Anybody? Help. Does anyone Nathaniel? remember? Nathaniel? I like fans. What, what, are, you, like, what are you rolling their hands Wide for? range of characters. It was, that oh, you can I do. know. Yeah, Nathaniel's wide range. 
playing Brad Garrett. I mean, just yeah. spot on. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded nothing like the character yeah. he did in that one. Yeah, but that's it's just bad. That, that's the beauty of these. But fan well, delivery I'm, is unchangeable. I'm gonna defend Than. I think it's brilliant. Now we gotta play the Raymond bit uh, promo. I know he, he sounds just like Brad Garrett. I challenge yeah. you. <laughs> Fuck those tribute bands that were just in here. Listen yeah. to this. This is this is next true. time on a very special. Everybody loves Raymond. Ray's brother needs a helping hand. Ray, I got a problem, man. You gotta help me. Oh! I picked up a tranny last night at Hunts Point, and there was an accident. No! We were trying this erotic asphyxiation thing. He. She was supposed to pitch me before it ran out of air. What are you doing? But Ray's father isn't buying it. What a lot of bull. Come on. All right, you got me. I picked him up on 10th Avenue. The family hijinks don't stop there. Ray, you got to help me get rid of the body. I don't want to do it. No, come on. It'll be fun. We'll chop it up and bury it out in Jersey. I live on Long Island. All on the next Everybody Loves Raymond. Tonight at 8. Oh, bravo, fan. Bravo. Thanks, Opie. You know, it gets harder when the uh, impression gets longer than we'll two bury, words. We'll bury it out on Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the fan. I didn't know I was doing a Brad Garrett until halfway you through that. You really? Did. You knew exactly what it you were doing. It sounds just like Brad Garrett. Did you try to do a different voice? When they have voice? to have, like, before. Or does uh, it just come out like that? I tried to sound like somebody who had just got in trouble for accidentally killing a transsexual. <laughs> but it sounded just like you describing it just there. Well... <laughs> He's doing Brad Garrett again. Wait a minute. Just now. Yeah. Keep doing it. It's, it's He's like those actors. Afterwards, they just, you know, they can't yeah, let yeah, the character caught up go. in the character. Yeah. Can't find the off switch. I don't know no. what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and that sounded just like the guy in the thing we just heard. Exactly. Assault the, on the media, the media promo. But I got excited in that one, so that was cool. Oh, you barely. <laughs> you barely got excited. I screamed like a maniac. <laughs> I thought that was somebody else, yeah. So then I did a good job. You did, then you must have done a good job. Jesus You're right. Jesus Christ. The thing You're holding gonna... back your scream, you know that. <laughs> You're yelling. Yeah, his maybe scream is like, it's like total monotone, but <laughs> yeah. louder. Yeah, yeah just totally louder, louder I, you. I am upset. I am upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's a higher Well, it's because he was in a church, you know. He didn't want to yeah. disrupt too much. Just enough. Just a little. In your face. Father. Father. Father, <laughs> now you're just exaggerating. Now it's exaggeration <laughs> to be funny. You you're right. Crazy. How'd that work out um, with you uh, Harry? Well, I got 100% of the votes. 100% of the votes <laughs> against Harry. So yep. you will not be losing your hair. Nope. Uh, neither will our staff. Uh, Harry's got to shave his head, I guess, and so does little Fezzy. Little Fezzy, Little Fezzy, yeah. Fezzy has to because uh, you were judged funnier. Yes. Because one judge called up. Yep. Yes. Ron and Fez will be talking about this a lot today one on their judge. show. <laughs> Starting at 11 right after this yes, program. Yes, they will. 202, which is mm -hmm. Opie's way of saying he's done with it. Well, congratulate. Oh, I just wanted man. to congratulate you, Thanks. I never, I, I never felt the bit. I, I got to be honest with you. It has nothing to do with you. I just, I don't want to do bits with Harry. I just don't like Well, that. you just, you know what it is. I, I know like what it is. I know what it is. It's not so much not feeling in the bit, because who wouldn't be into some kind of you're funnier than this guy bit or you're not as funny as this guy bit. It, it works. You just don't like Harry so much. You want no involvement with I Harry don't want at to all. Do with him, no. Right. No. Yeah. There's people I don't like, but I know... And he's not even the one that shit under people. my desk. Jesus. There's a lot of people I don't like, but I know they can do good radio, so we go yeah. with it. I, there's nothing there for yeah. me. Nothing. Not feeling it. No. And it has nothing to do with you, Nathaniel, because I know we've kind of turned our backs on you a little bit. We know you're funny. We like your humor. I like the dryness and the sarcasm. But I, I just wasn't feeling the, the competition with Harry. He was just jettisoned from the show like garbage. <laughs> like well, we went garbage. with it in the beginning, and I'm like, Ugh, I, why is this guy even in our studio? Yeah. I just couldn't I couldn't even look at him. Like other guys come in like Bill. They got interesting stories. Bill, the intern, right, right. comes in, and he's just a psychopath or something. <laughs> Harry was just like, yeah. And he's kind of, I don't know, and he's pompous. Yeah. Yeah. In a weird way, it's mm -hmm. I don't I don't know what it is. I a little just, smug, smug. You think? Well, no part I of it. I just like that word. He's been. But Ron and Fez will be riding yeah. this bit, and they'll make it funny, and they'll they'll have a good time with it. So uh, listen to Ron and Fez today. I'm sure yes. Nathaniel will be on the show discussing it further. Congrats, right? Congrats, thank, thank you very much. Thank you for your support, Anthony. Oh, I definitely called up and had to support you. Yes. The fact that he just rips off Seinfeld bits. <laughs> if you're gonna rip off somebody's friggin' material, the Seinfeld thermostat bit. Yeah. I mean, it's just try classic. Trying to Seinfeld get a little bit. more obscure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Joe Rogan. Steve, thank you. Rip off Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't mind. No, he doesn't <laughs> care. I'll kick his ass. Rear naked choke. <laughs> hey, we're talking about uh, Brian Wilson. Yeah. On Imus. Uh-huh. 
Well, it's actually Rob Bartlett doing this uh, Brian Wilson character. Hysterical. It's taken over the world on TV. Love it. It really is. Imus is uh, riding this one, and he's helping us out in the process because uh, he's wearing an Opie and Anthony t-shirt and calling Imus Opie, and then Imus is uh, giving us huge plugs on MSNBC. Tell him where to get the t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, he's a fan and a friend. Certainly, yeah. right? Yeah. So we got some audio of uh, of the Brian Wilson character <laughs> doing weather. Listen right. to this. Caused Mel in Cancun to get the worst of this storm system today. <laughs> back here. How am I supposed to keep continuing with this? <laughs> Brian Wilson. Listen. Let's send him down. Let's send him down to uh, Cause Mel in Cancun. <laughs> He's doing assaults on the media. That's an assault on the media. He got behind the weather guy and started <laughs> freaking out. Very good. <laughs> and then uh, I just had a whole discussion about my brother's T-shirts, just in case you missed it from earlier today. We'll play this again here. Okay. Anthony, Dee Dee's outside the studio. She's trying to pitch Dee Dee a show. Dee from Washington? She's trying to pitch a show for 202. Is it a... Uh, Two mix- Chicks and a Dick or something like that? Yep. Is the name of the show right? Two chicks and a dick. And we got excerpts. Yep. All right, we'll uh, we'll talk to Dee Dee. What the, the guy's break. name is Dick? Who's the co-host? Uh, yeah, it must be. Have you met Dee Dee yet? No, I haven't. She's a lovely, lovely lady, Bill. Mythbusters and a jackass. Is that what they're pitching? Mm. Shock jocks. Shock jock radio with lawsuits. I like it. Here's Imus talking about uh, yeah. us and T-shirts and everything else. <laughs> How's Opie and Anthony doing, by the way? I see you have their T-shirt on. I don't, I don't, I don't know. How are you, Opie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and a Party Rock XM202. Someone in my family stole my Opie and Anthony T-shirt, and you can't. They're on XM Satellite Radio. You can't get another Opie and Anthony T-shirt. Well, you can. But you have to you have to get a hold of Opie's brother. It's a process. And uh, <laughs> Opie's brother, what's his brother's name? Do you know? Elmo. Elmo. You have to get a hold of Opie, Opie's brother, Elmo. What were their parents thinking about, by the way? <laughs> Opie and Elmo. Anyway, you have to get a hold of That's Elmo. His sister Betty Bumperjack. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the hell knows where Elmo is, and but Elmo, he eventually will send you the shirt. So yeah, you just gotta meet him with cash in an alleyway. <laughs> but, uh, you have to pay for the shirt ahead of time, and uh, and then the, the, I guess what he does is he makes them one, and once he gets the money. So how much are they? About nineteen, twenty bucks, something like that, or more? Well, it depends. <laughs> Double XL. Gotta have that fat Beautiful. boy surcharge. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, twenty-eight after the art. There you go, our buddy, yeah, our pal. Anyway. I missed helping out the show earlier this morning. Thank yeah. you, Imus. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate it. I'll yeah. over here. Okay. <laughs> hey, you know how we've been doing the news teases? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's get... always funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Imus, yeah. Yeah. You know, the outrageous news teases? Our favorite is still in the machine here. One city wants to pack all their sex offenders into a three-block area. Problem is, it could be right next to your house. Oh. Ah. Well, South Park has jumped on the bandwagon. The South Park season has begun. Yeah. And they're doing uh, a little bit on that. Ooh. Want to hear some audio? Tom, I'm currently 10 miles outside of Beaverton, unable to get inside the town proper. We do not have any reports of fatalities yet, but we believe that the death toll may be in the hundreds of millions. (laughs) Beaverton has only a population of about 8,000, Tom, so this would be quite devastating. (laughs) Any word on how the survivors in the town are doing, Mitch? We're not sure what exactly is going on inside the town of Beaverton, uh, Tom, but we're reporting that there's looting, raping, and yes, even acts of cannibalism. My God, you've, you've actually seen people looting, raping, and eating each other. No, no, we haven't actually seen it, Tom. We're just reporting it. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. Oh, that's great. Fucking brilliant. Something we've been discussing on the show for uh, many, many weeks. Uh, they're obviously referring to, you know, the old the hurricane. hurricane. Yeah. Hurricane Katrina. That is really good. That's funny, man. Very funny. You were saying in the office, too, that uh, originally they said they were going to get like 10,000 victims out of this thing. Yeah, remember uh, Fox News and CNN? They were reporting uh, the death toll, uh, the projected death toll, and uh, it was well into the tens of thousands. It was like at least ten or 15,000. Right. Uh, other people said 20. Um, well, they, they finally uh, tallied up all the dead is this an in official? New Orleans. Total? Yeah, the official total was 990. 
It was uh, just short of a thousand people that uh, perished. A lot of people, but when you got panicky Pete's on the news saying ten thousand people over and over again, yeah, fifteen thousand people throwing dead. fear at us, yeah, day um, in and day out, and then the number comes out, it's a uh, less than a thousand, which is uh, a relief. You got to think. For the people in that area. When you had uh, Geraldo and all these other clowns standing there pointing at a dead body, Shepard Smith, in the street and saying, you know, this man is just laying here dead. Countless others in countless other places here in New Orleans, others uh, under the water in their houses. This will be a huge death toll. We're going to find thousands of people dead in their attics. Yeah, that's, Remember what, they, all that that's stuff? what they thought. So the total comes out. Where was it reported? Like on page 89? Yeah, I saw like it was a little snippet in, little, the, in the paper. It wasn't the big uh, headline, right? No, no. It wasn't on the front page, nothing like no. that. What are they going to write? We fucked up. Yeah. Well, Tens of thousands, not dead. Yeah. <laughs> Alive. <laughs> Alive. <laughs> what a miracle. Got another clip from South Park. This is a Fox News update. Disaster. Global warming appears to have struck as predicted in the Colorado Rockies. All around the country, panic and chaos are settling in. Tom, I'm standing just outside of Chicago where the panic of global warming has already caused countless deaths. Already we're reporting that the death toll here in Chicago is over 600 billion people. <laughs> With the crickets in the background. Fuck it, South Park. Oh, oh that is good. That show's been on for so long, and I swear, I just when I think, eh, maybe they've run it, the, yeah. their course and everything, you watch an episode and go, no, this shit is still fucking they're funny. St they're still doing it. Bravo to those guys, Matt and Trey and the gang. That's really funny. That is true, though. Every time I see that show, it's hilarious. Yeah, it's hysterical. And it's like sophomoric and like brilliant at mm -hmm. the same time. Yeah. Cartman kills me every time. You know, you think that character would get old after ten years, but it's hysterical. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then Steve's very, very upset today because over 50 people have sent this clip in today. 50. Get Steve. Whenever yep. something happens, Steve gets it sent to him not once, not twice, but sometimes hundreds of times. Right, Steve? Yeah. What's this clip about? Everyone thought this was very important to send to you so we can play on the show today. There's an animated series on Comedy Central called Drawn Together, and it's a bunch of uh, superheroes, I think. And, uh, you know, it's, it's another one of these um, referential kind of comedies like The Simpsons and Family Guy and South Park. And uh, they referenced the word shwoogie last night. Really? And that, ki that clip was coming in all night. All night. We're starting to think that we might have came up with the, the, the term shwoogie. Wow, if or we the could old influence Boston. society like that. We have to find an earlier use of the term shwoogie, earlier than 1995, 96. Yeah, 96 or, yeah, about 96. 96. Find an earlier usage, <laughs> and uh, they'll get credit for it. But as far as I'm concerned, we invented, hoo hoo, the word shwoogie. Bruce Mittman, thank you. It made TV yesterday. Damn you all. I almost finished what my ancestors started. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for that meddling shwoogie. Shwoogie. <laughs> is it Yiddish is or it not? A Yiddish yeah, term? it is. I got, a, I got a definition last night. It, you is, did. A, it is a Yiddish word. Uh, or it's like, it's, a, it's like a hybrid, if you well, will. Well, let's get the uh, Yids to call and tell us. Oh, Jesus. What? Is that bad? I it's really kind of know. derogatory. To call them yids? Well, what is shwoogie? That yeah. isn't exactly not yeah. derogatory. Right? Yeah, but for some reason, uh, that's fine. But see, Anthony, <laughs> see, Anthony's a racist, so he didn't really... That didn't, I am not a racist. That didn't really filter at all in his brain. Yid. <laughs> I just want to talk what, to what, a yid. What, what, what is the definition? Yeah, yeah what, what is, is the definition? definition? Shwoogie. What is it? Give me the definition. If you got the definition last night... Or did I already night, hear the definition at the Hard Rock Cafe? <laughs> I think you probably heard it at the Hard Rock during your first appearance oh. numerous times. Yeah, what a crowd we had there. Wow. Wow, did they yeah. just go off. Without even any provocation, you know? I'll give it to them if they're then provoked. The, yeah, but then there was no reprimand on any level. Oh, because just... that would work. There was the... And there was reprimand. I went, hey, oh, now, stop whoa, it. What are what you, you doing? Yeah. What is that? Okay. You can't reprimand these people. They'll kill you. The word comes from a combination of the Yiddish or bastardized German word for black, schwatze, and boogie, short for... Jesus. 
Chigaboo. Uh, what? So the word is pronounced shwoogie. That's the that's the oh, definition yeah. I got emailed last night. From where? A yid. From who? From a Yiddish person or a Jewish person. That's horrendous. Mm. I don't buy it. No. Uh, I have no idea how to verify that. It's been speaking with like Jewish people. All right. Yeah. My dad used it. Josh. Let's say uh, let's say hi to Josh. Hey, Josh. Hey, how's it going? All right, Josh. Uh, I, I don't know anything about the uh, the Yiddish term, but I know when I was a kid, I grew up in a. A redneck family in Bucks County, PA, and my father used to call them swiggies all the time. I was about eight years old. I'm 33 now. All right, so maybe we didn't invent the word, Anthony. Yeah. Hey, oh, Robin. At least we can admit that we didn't invent everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to break. <laughs> you guys are, like, bummed out. We didn't invent uh, that yeah. word of hate. Kind of bummed. <laughs> Kind of bummed. We were excited. Not with the original, with that slur. <laughs> we're excited. At least we acknowledge when we didn't invent something. <laughs> that slur. Oh, wow. Oh, there you go. I mean, you're still young, man. You can come up with a new racist term. It's oh. so hard, though. So many have been taken. And well, all pick the good an obscure ones. group. No one really wants to work on a like new Eskimos. one. Like Eskimos. No one, no one Is really dislikes the Eskimo. Is there a good one for an Eskimo? Eskimo. Bill. Does anyone dislike an Eskimo enough where that would catch on enough Bill. people? White people in Alaska? I'm sure they got some for you need a, a group of people that a lot of people don't like, for whatever reason. And that would work. How about Vietnam? Well, Vietnamese had Charlie. Dude, are you kidding gook. me? You, you can't, the, the level of hatred that it just... When I was in Georgia, they had a word for, like, women that they weren't into, like, they were called Bamas. Like, somehow really? Alabama was considered more fucked up than Georgia. <laughs> than Georgia? No, no, no. Because yeah. huh? they're called Buffalo Bettys in Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. But Buffalo I'm not, Bettys. I'm saying that there's, yeah, there's obscure... A little localized. Shit. Yeah, so there's no way if you talk to somebody from maybe Juno or fucking Anchorage that they don't ah. have something for an Eskimo. Sure, they True. Okay. You fucking I agree now. harpoon chucka. <laughs> and by the way, Bill, <laughs> you blubberita. Yeah, you. F- you don't give me enough credit. I've been trying to come up with a new <clears throat> word for a long time. Oh, for what? Okay. And I came up with the word kunk. It's not in the dictionary. Yeah, but so it didn't it really catch on. I know, but I tried. And what is it? We well, you know, you you, you call a girl a kunk. <laughs> it's just it because mean? it sounded like the C word, though. Well, you know, we try to get that combination. Going. There's no, no one. There's no like word. Larpenter. I is that like a cunt? I invented the word cunk. C U N K. Look it up. There's no word in the dictionary yet. All right. How about a definition? We need a good definition, then we could like get hand it in. So it's a word before a definition yeah. is even. We're feeling the whole where you call someone a cunk. <laughs> But that's as far as we got with the new word. Yeah, we like, were that's actually like told. Fugly. Yeah, yeah. I understand, but don't you think by now "kunk" should be a word? We've been around a long time. We were told we weren't allowed to use the word "kunk" either oh, on yeah. the air. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, we, after we used it a while, yeah. we were told no. Oh, uh, <laughs> we were told not to uh, use it. Yeah, on commercial radio, we started calling girls and stuff "kunks." You "kunk," and they actually sat us down and uh, in an office and told us we just weren't allowed to use a word mm-hmm. that doesn't exist. That's how crazy commercial radio got. Yeah, because they knew what you were doing. But that doesn't they, matter. They, they That's not what the FCC they is did. Well, I mean, you could sing songs like "Get Get the Funk Out of My Face." I mean, you, you know what he was trying to say, right? right. Back in the disco era, right? Very good. Coke spoon around your neck. A couple of uh, photoshops showing up with. Um, me in a uh, an action figure box mm-hmm. with my new shotgun that I uh, got <laughs> yesterday, and uh, me on the cover of uh, Clint Eastwood movie, uh, me in the video of the Columbine, uh, <laughs> the closed circuit Columbine. Yeah, that's a little twisted. <laughs> killing uh, outside the bank in Dog Day Afternoon. Yep. <laughs> and uh, a yep. couple of them in, in a GI Joe box. Me walking with uh, the Earps <laughs> in Tombstone. Tombstone yeah. <laughs> a bunch of clowns. Very funny. All right. We're going to take a break. Uh, as we go to break, we're going to play the Kaplan Brothers, their latest creation, Anthony. Mm-hmm. So oh, I- that's a good one. Wabbit season, duck season. What's that noise? Uh, Daffy coming up to me, and I gather I shoot his bill off. I'm watching this. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, there's Daffy getting shot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're going to have to go to whackbag.com, W-A-C-K bag.com. Go to Photoshop. They do a good job every day. Yeah. 
photoshops based on uh, the Daily Show. Okay, uh, the Kaplan Brothers from Silence of the Lambs, the musical, right. the CDs out there. These guys are touring the country now in small theaters with this whole thing. And here's a song they came up with that uh, is not on the CD. They were proud of, and they sent to us directly. So here it is. <laughs> All right. People are uh, people are starting their evacuation from Orlando. Why are they leaving Orlando? The hurricane I'm flying there in a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, <laughs> I am. I I'll be there. I'm gonna see the bodies Friday. floating down the street. I'm going right for the hurricane. I'm going exclusively yeah. just to see what Hurricane Wilma is all about. You oh, are yeah. not flying into Orlando Friday. Yes, I am. And I will not be flying. By the way, Friday Saturday. is tomorrow. No, they'll have. Uh, you, you will not be flying in. Yes, They're leaving now. Doesn't matter. You the think survivors. the people at the airport are going to be waiting? Yeah. You know no. what's going to happen? The survivors are going to be raping each other inside that Epcot ball. The big Epcot at Disneyland. ball. <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to be their Superdome. The Epcot ball will be floating. That's all they'll show from the helicopter. You're not Rolls getting over to Disney slowly. until Monday. I am leaving Friday. I am checking in. I will <laughs> You're enjoy. You're not going to make it to Orlando. I tomorrow. will absolutely Orlando. You know what? You they know, just showed a live shot. People are leaving Orlando. You think the people that work at the airport are, are going to go? Ah, we'll wait. This we'll hurricane. We'll wait until Anthony lands. This hurricane has to make a drastic Yui. They have no idea where it's going as far as the U-turn goes. Wrong. When it, w yes, when Wrong. a hurricane's going straight. They got a pretty good idea if there's no steering winds, which way it's going. When it's got to make that boomerang hook like it's going to do, they, just they don't know, know where they it's going to end up. This thing could end up hitting. It's following a pattern that they've seen many, many times. No, they just don't know ridiculous. exactly where it's going to hit. Not only that, but Orlando isn't on the beach. There's enough real estate there where that thing will be a category. If it hits at a four on the coast, it'll be a two by the time it hits it's Orlando. That's what I heard. Anthony, <laughs> that's not what I heard. That's not what I heard. I heard it's coming in. It's coming in hard, man. You better hope the people that work that are working at the airport have the same logic as you. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Who needs to work there? They got be... two guy, one guy with the friggin' lights in his hand to bring me to the terminal. And, and the, words... the other guy that pressed the button to bring the terminal thing. In out the words of Jim Norton, there's going to be a lot of panicky Pete's down there. Not and on they are gonna Friday. And they're going to be leaving their jobs uh, to go to safety. Not on you Friday. You will not be flying into Orlando tomorrow. You Mark watch me. Yeah, this guy's broadcasting from Orlando on Fox. Pull him up. What's he saying? No, this is... What's he saying? Uh, evacuation orders actually for non-residents and tourists. Uh, that went out uh, yesterday, and the truth is a lot of those non-residents and tourists did heed those uh, orders. They are pretty much gone, but you still have a whole lot of people who are in this area. There's a dress code. I can tell you this much, John, also. Now, we do know that Wilma, she is a Category 4 right now. Uh -huh. And it appears, according to Max Mayfield, as if this thing is going to stretch out a little bit longer. Here in the Keys, Monroe County officials have decided that they're going to wait 24 hours before they make it mandatory for residents of the Keys area to get the big on boot and get on out of here. Swing it behind me, Chris, if you could a little bit. Swing what's it. What's going on right now is uh, here. Oh, they're boarding up windows again. Let me tell you what's going to happen with this hurricane. Let let meteorologist Anthony tell you. All this right. thing is going to clip the Yucatan Peninsula. It's going to weaken. And then it's going to go into the Gulf and not make as hefty a U-turn as they say. It's going to weaken because the water's just not as warm as it was uh, where it was. And it's just going to continue to weaken. And uh, it'll probably hit somewhere. I hope that fucking off thing Florida, comes right back around. That thing ain't gonna do shit. you and your fucking plane. And it certainly ain't gonna hurt my flight uh, uh, tomorrow. I will. My flight will be on time. I will go down there, and it'll be wonderful. Even this if is you denial. land, yeah, this is total without, denial. Without a doubt, because you'll be in your hotel for a few hours. One day I'll and have then you're some rain. Have evacuate and go north for a while. I'm and not don't evacuating. tell me hurricanes don't do damage in Orlando. My have sister, you ever seen Disney my destroyed? Lives in Orlando and she lost her roof. Disney has, has never been destroyed by a hurricane. And and some of those uh, uh, big trees just disappear. Let me oh, tell you something. While the God. wind's blowing and everyone's freaking out, you know what I'll be hearing? Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. That's what I'll be hearing. No, you won't. Please stand clear no, of the won't. monorail doors as they close. He's going to be drinking bath water with fucking mouse ears on his head by <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> I'm supposed to fly into Miami Saturday and then... Now that's a problem. And they go somewhere after that. Miami and, uh, on Saturday. Well, I'm just hoping that they, they take a... <laughs> I'll fly around it? Oh, they, go ahead. I, I'm tell me how Africa looks. I'm or if they go the other way, tell me what Asia looks like. I'm hoping for a fly around Saturday morning. 
to you're gonna have to have in midair refueling to fly around this monster. I'm gonna end up in the Catskills for my vacation. I know it. I'm gonna be at <laughs> fucking Lake Placid or something. Come you're up and see me in Albany. Catskills. I'll be there on Sunday, man. No one puts Opie in a the corner. Egg. I'm gonna be in the fucking Adirondacks, like horseback riding. I don't want to do that. I want to be scuba diving. Mm. It ain't happening. You're gonna be scuba diving at Disney, I think. <laughs> at least I'm not delusional, man. We're both fucked. Do you know we're both fucked? It's far enough inland and to the uh, east in Florida where that much land, it's fine. There'll be some rain. There'll be a lot of rain and wind. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Walt built all that in. Walt knew that hurricanes hit down there. Well, let's go Walt to... was dead while, when they built Disney World, but he knew. Let's go to O-Town. <laughs> Kelly and O-Town. O-Town. O-Town, check it in. Hey, I don't I, O-Town, what a bunch of pussies. I'm actually from Orlando, but uh, listen, I was here last year during you all those pussy three name. hurricanes. <laughs> yeah. First ones in 40 years. They are a bunch of pussies. Everybody boarded up their windows in Orlando, but we did have flatline winds, 80 mile an hour, which is the freakiest thing I've ever seen. It doesn't gust. It's just solid winds. And by the way, Anthony, Disney shut down, like, for the first time ever, because, you know, those money-hungry bitches, uh-huh. they don't shut down for anything. They shut down last year for that. So uh, if you're planning on going and seeing Donald, good luck if these pussies panic again. No, they won't. You know there's a, the PGA Tour they're playing down there, Disney? Yeah. And everything's fine. They're all down there. Everything's dandy. Don't worry about it. All right. Well, let's go to Joe in O-Town. Joe? Yo, what's up? This guy's stealing all my thunder here. What's up? What's up? <laughs> I was calling about the hurricanes, too. I was here for all three of them. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, Disney was open, like, the next day after all of them. Not even. Of they, course. There was no damage, no damage whatsoever. I don't know what the hell. They're, like, in a different country over there or something. I don't know. Man. All right. But, Thank you, Joe. Later, guys. All right. Well, and then <laughs> they, we got... They always evacuate the keys, and then that's it. Everything else is fine. Well, they got... Let's uh, hear Presser. Presser, what's up? Hey, what's up, b- b- boys? Hey. Uh, actually, it's Presser with a T. That's all right, nice. guys. Uh, I live in Port Charlotte, Florida, and I just want to let everyone know that we're all going to die. Wow, everyone in Florida? Of course. Everyone, every single one just gone. Boom. <laughs> all right. Well, the hurricane is slowing down a little bit. Now they're saying Sunday, 2 a.m., it's not even hitting. Wow, it's really... Look, look, it's not supposed oh, to hit... Oh, I'm getting a little excited. Look it's at that. It's not supposed to hit where I'm going to be until Monday afternoon. Monday at 2 a.m. Yet they're going to close the airport Friday. Saturday at 2 a.m., it's way over there. <laughs> yeah, but that's like right where you got to go. No, no, I have to go further south from there. But what's that thing right there? Is that the Yucatan Peninsula thing? The Yucatan. All right, so that's it's going to be over there. Yeah. I'll be in Miami. Then I do the little fly around to my little island. I'm I'm good. I'm good to go. Both of you guys are going to be in, in a <laughs> I'm good to go. bed and breakfast in Rochester, New York. <laughs> Vermont. I'm not going horseback riding, and I'm not checking out leaves. No, I want great. to scuba dive. The, the foliage is changing. Shut Wonderful. up. You're going to be wearing those. Great orange. Those Shut up. Little, those vests, you know, with the no sleeves. Orange parka. Orange vest. <laughs> Wow, man, if my pilot could do a little loop-de-loo... Where's he going? I'm going to be fine. You're going to have to fly over Cuba. I think we're going to have to... No, can you fly over Cuba? I don't think we're allowed to fly over oh, Cuba. Oh, man, then we're going to have to go all the way down to, like, Haiti. Not allowed to fly over Cuban airspace. Really? I really don't think we are. So. Oh, my God. So how how do we do this, then? you got to kind of go around. They're going to take us all the way around? Maybe you got to go, like, you got to skirt the Gulf Coast. You're going to be able to see, like, New Orleans. No. And then you got to go south. Holy crap. You're screwed. How the hell do I, That's the problem. You yeah. are screwed. Because of stupid Cuba, I still might be screwed. That's mm. in the way. He's going to be diving in Lake Winnipesaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at that pirate down there. <laughs> Come back. They don't give up their dead. I know, Bill. That's right. <laughs> BillBird.com, everyone. You can find the lake monster. All right. We have lake the, George. We got the guy from Giant Magazine coming in to talk about scary Halloween movies. That mm-hmm. should be worth about uh, two minutes. Uh, and then we got <laughs> TD. <laughs> I got I just look you the bird. I'll be good. Well deserved. And uh, we got DD, what, two chicks and a dick? They're coming in in a few minutes. We should get everyone in at the same time. But also, there's a couple other things we haven't talked about yet. Uh, Johnny Carson with the death threats. Mm -hmm. Who knew this was uh, going on? Mm -hmm. I guess the FBI. I guess we didn't either. Huh? I guess we didn't either. Yeah. 
It's the FBI who released well, a bunch that, of stuff. What was that one letter? What paper was that in? I believe it was the Post. You think it was the Post? I think it was the Post. It's pretty much the same paper. Yeah, but even though they're they the same paper, so you have like to find a story that was only in one. Here in New York, we got two papers that everyone pretty much goes for: the Daily News and the Post, and they both claim that the other one's evil and the, and the other one's not. Uh, but they're the same paper. They're the same exact paper. Uh -oh. But they're in major competition. Look at Opie just trying to fill time as we scamper trying to find this page. story. Well, whatever. Well, he got. I got it. I got it. Page ninety nine. I just want to. You just got to read that one death threat letter that you read okay, in the here's, office. Okay, here's Bill. what he got. It was kind of scary. Nineteen seventy four or nineteen seventy four note from some guy in uh, North Carolina talking. I was going to kill Johnny Carson. He said, "I have nothing to lose. I will be in Hollywood to carry out the threat if the money is not sent." P.S. How is your wife? I am a homicidal maniac. <laughs> <laughs> That's his P.S. Yeah. That's his postscript. Like he wrote it and signed it and then went, Ooh, Oh, yeah, by the way, I'm a homicidal maniac. <laughs> by the way, if, if up top didn't uh, fill yeah. you in, I'm yeah. crazy. Part about wanting to kill you and I have nothing to lose, I better put a P.S. I really didn't come across as a nut on this. I better tell him. Homicidal maniac. Why would you want to kill Johnny? Like, what was that? Comics? Bitter comics that got bumped? <laughs> Didn't get the couch? Yeah, no, it could have been something like that. Because that is, uh, yeah. out of all the, all the people you could have killed during... 1974, who would you want to kill? 74? There's probably a lot of, like, yeah. political things and, you know, Nixon. Mike Douglas. Yeah, he was a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> Mike in Jersey. Yes. Oh, man, everybody. How you guys doing? All right. Listen, uh, the only airline that's allowed to fly over Cuba is Jamaica Air. So if you can get a flight on Jamaica Air, that's the only airline that's allowed to fly over their airspace. Oh, yeah? So you can get in, get out. It's beautiful. That's why I went down to Jamaica last year. It took all of three hours and 20 minutes to fly down because they can fly straight over. This guy's... This guy here is saying, uh, and commercial flight uh, flying uh, instruments can fly over Cuba. They provide permission to commercial flights as well as uh, IFR instrument non-commercial. I'm a pilot. Take care, Nick the pilot. I'm oh, a private pilot. Well, Nick knows more than I and do. you I can fly know. over Cuba with an overflight permit. You have to pay fees to the Cuban government. I fly to the Caymans all the time right over Cuba. There you go, then. We learned something on this show. All when right. people say this show isn't educational, I want to slap them in the head. That's right. Well, so they're a, not worried about us spying on them anymore? Just get a permit? Like, what could we possibly see there that we would care about? Cigars. There's no Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah there's cigar production. we got satellites that could zoom right in on that. Don't need the old, you know, pilot in the U-2 spy plane anymore. You know they have a park named after John Lennon in Cuba? No way. The John Lennon Park? Stop it. Swear to God. You sure it isn't the... It's a statue. Vladimir looks, Lennon Park? It, no, it's a statue that looks like John Lennon the Beatle. And it has real glasses on it, and no one steals the glasses. Really? Yeah, I learned it. Yeah, because they'll saw the hands Does it off. say John or just Lennon? I swear to God, it's, it's, a, it's a park named yeah. after John Lennon in Cuba. Wow. That sounds it's like a little bullshit. strange. It's a bench uh -huh. with John Lennon sitting on it. It's a sculpture. Really? It has real glasses, yeah. I watched the yeah. uh, the uh, Audio Slave DVD, and they visited the John Lennon Park. Yeah. Do they have a Ringo Stalin uh, <laughs> statue also? <laughs> and they were amazed that uh, no the one steals... quiet commie. <laughs> no one really steals the glasses. The statue's been... Well, they'll be shot. At their real glasses on a statue, and no one steals the glasses, really. Is that it right there, Hawk? There you go. A tribute from, to, uh, from uh, Havana to John Lennon in the, the 60s. 60s. How about that? That's one of the great things about having a mm. dictator. Yeah, is that 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 kind of, the same kind of fear that you're trying to instill with your shotgun out right, there? Right. Yes. Is the kind of fear that a guy like Saddam Hussein? You saw him not even recognizing that court yesterday. Right. Saddam Who are you? rules now. I and I know they want to give him the death penalty, like they're trying to hang him uh, on this stuff. But I would feel bad if if they hung him. He's coming off as a much cooler guy as a prisoner than he ever did as a dictator. Now he's he absolutely says, when they ask him about uh, what, it, what he thinks about uh, the election taking place or the, the Americans or anything, he just says, this, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm the, I'm the president of uh, Iraq. Like, he will not acknowledge that he is not the president. He's, to his, in his mind, he's still the president. 
He is going to be running things again. This is just a minor inconvenience. What do you think is going through his head? Because you know his ego is like, there's no way this is. I'm going down in this. And the person who's like... Uh, like questioning him, you know, he's just thinking of all the different kinds of ways he's going to torture. Oh him. yeah, the, the the torture chamber will open up, and this I will prosecuting light his right attorney ball on fire, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. While sawing his ear off. When I am back, your family, the pain your family will feel. Like that's just <laughs> his fantasy going on in that head. You got to think in the back of the judge's mind. He's thinking there is a slight possibility. That not only are we not going to prove shit, he's going to be the leader again, and I'm fucked. Well, it, it, it's happened in the past. People have been exiled, and then a government comes in. They run things for a while. They get chased out by some fanatics, and the, the exiled leader is a hero. He comes back a hero, back in power. It's happened before. He's studying faces in that courtroom like right now. Like the Ayatollah Khomeini. Oh, yeah. He was uh, an exile out of uh, Iran when the Shah was in there. And he was our right-hand man, the Shah. Everyone thought that was going to go fine for many years. And then all of a sudden, he's gone. The Shah comes in. He's the head muckety-muck. And uh, we had no say in the matter. Who's to say that wouldn't happen again? And Saddam gets back in power, find all the judges, all those prosecuting attorneys, and just imagine the bloodshed. Are they really going to... Uh, who's going to kill him? Uh, whatever wheels of justice they got over there, they oh, so they it's the Iraqi him, government, the Iraqi government. Uh, but he's just coming across as a very fun guy now. He won't even acknowledge the court by giving his name. They ask him, "What's your name?" He doesn't talk. You know, he goes, "You know who I am." Yeah, you know who I am. John Wayne uh, Swagger. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You know who I am, and I know What's who you are. They asked him eight times before they had to tell him just sit down. What he said. Yeah, you know who I am. He said, who are you? Who are you? That's exactly what's going on. I want on your name, head. Buster. <laughs> right. You know, he's who like got a little pad. What's your name? I'm writing this down. How many family members do you have that I am going to rape and torture? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All, right. All right. Why don't we get the girls in here? Gamefly.com as we get the gang. Get everybody in here that needs to stay. Yeah, he goes, first of all, the when they asked him what his name was, he goes, first of all, who are you and what are you? What are you? Yeah, he wants to know this guy's position. I didn't appoint you, and so what you are obviously you, you aren't fucking a peasant. Yeah. <laughs> Think I don't have some mustard gas laying around there, buddy? <laughs> I'm going to lob on you and your fucking hut the second this shit is over? This, this, uh, as soon as this inconvenience is over. Oh, if I was that judge, I'd, they'd have to reassure me every five seconds. I'd have George Bush on. You're going to kill this guy, right? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. We've got freedom. We're staying the course. We, stay don't, we don't abandon countries. We don't, we're not going to leave. We're going to stay the course, and this action's going to... Are you sure of this? Because he looks very angry at me. <laughs> What's your name? What do you do? You dug him out of a hole. He's pissed. Who are you and what are you? All right. What are you? It's Gamefly.com as Dee Dee makes her way into the studio. I love it. Uh, hey, Dee Dee. Love the Dee Dee, why don't you do the Gamefly.com live oh. rate? Because, you know, Dee Dee. Our, our listeners have heard us do it many, many times, and uh, we can't vary the reading anymore. Dee Dee, please. I'm going to fuck it up, though. No, <laughs> no. Do you like video games, fine. Dee Dee? Um, What's your favorite video game? The, what is that one with oh, the girl that... Oh, the one where the girl passes out and marries some guy? No, <laughs> she comes out of the car and she goes, what the fuck are you doing? Or something like that. What is that called? Grand Theft Auto? Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good I one. I like Grand Theft Auto. That's that was that was asteroid. That was a... Oh, uh, Asteroids? That yeah, asteroid? that was an Asteroid. That was a great description of uh, Grand Theft Auto, by the way. Very nice. Sorry. No, it was good. Am I supposed to that? <laughs> just read it cold. Don't un- You're a professional. I know, but I'm just a do a cold nervous. read. Let's go. I'm a little nervous. Why are you nervous? Because I'm actually on medication right now because I'm supposed to be in the hospital and I'll show you the paperwork. Wait, wait. Is this anything contagious? No, it's a kidney infection. That <laughs> I think they're contagious. No, they're not. <laughs> they are. Only if you're having sex at the time. Ah. Jerking off, but <laughs> I don't think that counts. Look at Billy's moving away. <laughs> no, I'm not yeah. contagious. Can you have anybody effect. healthy come in here? Never. <laughs> Some never. urine stained homeless guy, or like it's never. Did you um? You sure you didn't wake up in a bathtub full of ice with your kidney missing and a note that no, said get see, to the I hospital? No, I had it for like they first put me on back trim about a month ago. Didn't work. Then back, put, term? back trim. Back trim. <laughs> back yeah, trim. Yeah, for antibiotic, and then they put me on Cipro. That didn't work. Oh, I, thought so. they, I thought it was salad. Yeah, I'm supposed to be in the hospital. <laughs> what is it? 
It's a kidney. It's a, actually a renal <laughs> oh, oh, I'm getting the woozies. Wait a minute. Wait. I feel all woozy now. <laughs> renal? That sounds like it's part of your renal. ass. What's no, going it's on not here? anal. It's a it's kidney renal. thing. It's a kid- renal abscess or a You have an abscess stone. like anal, a big rectal. You have a zit on your kidney. Ew. You have a kidney it's pimple. It's not like a kidney stone or something. See? I'm not lying. What am, am I, I, a doctor? She shows me this note for this big <laughs> medical list of checked off Actually, items. I'm supposed to go in. I'll go back and I'll go in and be on some IV antibiotics for a couple of days. In the hospital? Yeah. So you can send me some flowers. Okay. <laughs> well, Gamefly.com oh. is a wonderful, wonderful website. Right, Dee Yeah. Gamefly.com is the world's leading online video game rental <laughs> service. It's so easy. You so <laughs> What? Just love your read. Okay. You we send love how you pronounce things. <laughs> Not, okay. I, and I know I'm far from perfect, but Jesus. You send the game Did you back just say online? Online. 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 Can I finish this? Yes. You yes, can yes, finish yes, I feel sick. <laughs> okay. You send the game back to the next game on your what? On your cue list. Okay. <laughs> it was automatically sent. Naturally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On your cue list, yeah. yeah. Gamefly lets you have up to two games at a time. Come on, stop. Yeah. Um, games that you can keep as long as you want without any late fees. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yes. And if you really like the game you're playing, you simply click keep it in your game queue. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and you get the mint condition box <laughs> and manual delivered to you. Right. Wait, 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 wait. All at a great member discount. That, yes. God, this long. Um, go to Gamefly.com slash XM to get signed up. It only costs twenty one ninety five a month. Stop whining. <laughs> but you can... St- <laughs> But you can start with a free two-week XM trial. No commitments. You can cancel any time. <laughs> Yeah. S- start playing the latest releases or games you're always wanted to play. Ooh. You've always wanted to play, sorry. At GameFly.com, there are over 2,500 titles to choose from. Xbox, PS2, GameCube, Game Boy, Advance, Flash DS, I don't know. <laughs> and the new PSP. Two games at a time. No shipping charges either way. Keep the games as long as you like with no late fees. All the mm-hmm. games you want. Go to Gamefly, that's G-A-M-E-F-L-Y dot com slash XM, and plug in XM in the promo code box wow. for your special offer, Gamefly dot com. God, that's a mouthful. I actually do that in, like, under a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you were interrupting wow. me now with the thing. No, we weren't. Were we're going to have to pay oh, them now. What the fucking was in the basket? Exactly. <laughs> wow. Ah. Well, <clears throat> we'll so we have a uh, DD. And well, let's say let's say hi to Jamie. How you guys doing? Oh, hey, Jamie, up, help man? us out, man, please. I just how much is GameFi paying for that? I hope yeah, a lot. I know. I want to apologize well done, to GameFi well people. No, I, I think that's that cool. Twenty five hundred, man. Jamie's the editor of Giant Magazine. I mm-hmm. saw the magazine out there. Seen this with we the, like Giant Magazine a lot. With love on the cover, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yeah. How's she looking? Um, ah. <laughs> really? Well, that let me good. actually, we when this magazine hit our office, we were very excited because uh, we like uh, we we like Jennifer Love Hewitt, but I don't know. Um, there's there's a lot of darkness in her photos. I was really into the Jennifer sultry. Love Hewitt, uh, like um, a party of five years. Yes, those were the the good years for Jennifer Love Hewitt. Oh, when she was fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. Problem with that? She develops <laughs> early. <laughs> like a pedophile. Look at me all defensive. Pedophile problem? with an attitude. You yeah, got a what? problem? <laughs> yeah, so? I'm taking appreciation to the next level. You know who looks She's so back, good. man. She's got a hit show. She's, her show's number one on Friday night. Ghost Whisperer. What was that one she had that just went right down right down the tubes, right after Party of Five? Oh, uh, yeah. She oh, moved man. to the city and no one cared? No one gave a shit. Party of was it a spinoff? Was it a spinoff, yeah. <laughs> Party, Party of one. None. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, look how cute Sarah Silverman is in that picture. Yeah, isn't that we cute? ran that you issue know her, before. Bill? No, you don't know her. No, I, I, mean, I know who she is. I don't, don't know, know her. her. No, she looks like she has bad body odor though. Why? I don't know. Something about it. <laughs> something about when you see her her picture. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. 
The they eyebrows have, are too bushy. Have fans something about thinking, about really. I'm you not think there's too much hair she's, she's on her clean. body? I'm not even kidding. I know she's definitely hot, and she's a very good comic. Yeah, she's beautiful. And uh, she goes out with Jimmy Kimmel and all that. But when I see her picture... I just get this feeling that she might smell a little bit. Wow. Ew. Is it is that bad? Like a patchouli kind of thing? Are you talking about uh, It could B. be o. that. It could be B.O. There's something going on there. That's a bold statement. It's just a feeling I get when I see her picture. Out of Did nowhere. Did you see her one time at a roast and you no, hit her? she was on, her on our she show. She shot you down. She was on our show. She was very lovely. Did she smell? I didn't really smell anything. So what are you basing this on? Uh, you, just a feeling I get. Is it an ethnic thing with her because she's uh, Jewish? I don't know, man. There's something going on there, though. seems like she might have a lot of hair. Like you're thinking maybe Hasidic? And it seems like she's fighting back a lot of hair all the time. Going through a lot of razors and stuff. Okay, Jennifer Love Hewitt. I'm looking at her picture. Body looks really good. Yeah. But the shots Um, are weird, right, Ed? There's something going on with the grill these days. I don't know what it is. Hmm. You get Um, that from just looking at it? There's something a little drag queenish. Yeah, it's called maturity, Anthony. Is she's that what little, it is? Uh, a little yeah, too mature for up. you now. She's uh, growing up. <laughs> all right, let's oh, just fill that like a little bit. And they're just, you know, I like when they're still a little baby fat in the face. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. from eating Lucky Charms. <laughs> 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 no, man, she, she was great. She's great. She's a very sweet girl. Mm, you know? Yeah. Have you seen the show? No. No, I she's haven't. Cute. She's I don't, so cute. I don't watch sitcoms. I'm sorry. It's... I really it's an hour-long drama. Too oh, good. it's a drama. Oh, it's a drama. I don't, I don't watch drama. I don't watch drama. <laughs> yeah. I don't watch hour-long drama. I don't watch that dramas. That insinuates sitcom-y. <laughs> I'm that watching, people often mistake for sitcoms. I'm watching The Apprentice because I was forced to by uh, the big boss, Eric Logan. Mm-hmm. We'll explain that one of these days. <laughs> We're forced. Oh, yeah. Completely. I'll admit yeah. it on the show. Forced mm-hmm. to watch The Apprentice and make believe I care, and we'll be talking to the next one that gets kicked off tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But I have to watch the show. You'll see why, eventually. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, of course. That's about it. It's great. That's about it. And hockey. They've been getting some complaints about that this year. They're saying it's maybe not as good this season as it, as it has been before. What do you think? Um, I think it's better nah, than ever. No, nah, I think it's just as good. Ratings, are, ratings are down a bit on uh, The Apprentice. And uh, Donald Trump was in the paper today saying, blaming it on Martha Stewart. Blaming it on her version of The Apprentice, saying that it's kind of diluting of the whole thing, and people are getting the too confused, and right. uh, she's ruining it for him. Same thing happened right. with Survivor, mm-hmm. and the reality was, uh, the reality was with this reality show, there were a whole bunch of other reality shows that came out, and that's why the ratings for Survivor were right. diluted. Mm-hmm. So, Jamie, what do you got going on in the so magazine? This is, you guys were had some uh, tribute bands in before. I don't know if you guys saw the piece we did on the um, yes, very even Manitou, better than the, the real way. thing. Very Manitou, by the way. Why is it, Brother or, Joe yeah. has the ultimate U2 tribute band. Oh, yeah. and the guy looks so much more like Bono than the, the two guys you featured in the magazine. Really? What, what page? Are you on? What page? Look at, look at this. What, what page? page are you on? I have to disagree with you. Uh, but you didn't even see Brother page, Joe's band. Page forty-two. We have a guy named Joe. Uh, he's the Los Angeles version. His band's called Electro- Electrical Storm, and Tony Russo is the uh, lead singer of Unforgettable Fire. They both look exactly like Bono. They get me oh in a picture of Joe's lead singer. These bands are unbelievable. But oh we- boy, did you screw this up? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll be surprised Listen, if you li- have a job on Monday. So we, uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll fire myself. Um, Ooh. So the oh, <laughs> no, there's someone are you who can the fire head, me. You Don't the worry. Head guy over there? Well, one of them. Um, all right, look. So we asked them what they did for a living, right? Oh, look at the questions. We asked them all about, you know, Jane, Africa. And, I'm not letting mm. this go. Come here. Yeah. Come here. I got a mic over here. You tell me that Brother Joe's lead singer and his U2 tribute band doesn't look just like oh Bono. Oh, God. See? That's him? That's him. Now, no. you should have. Uh, that... You said you disagree. All right. Now you know what? Back. I take it back. You guys are right. It's your show. Doesn't he look exactly like him? Be honest. He does, dude. He does. But these. Can you imagine guys, the promotion you would have got if you put Brother Joe's tribute band in this magazine? I know. What's What's Brother Joe's band's called? Uh, uh, to to you. you. To you. Yeah. Mm, clever. He's all right. playing all over the world, my friend. I like the questions you did ask them. What do you do for a living? Mm-hmm. Uh, one produces uh, helps produce albums, and one works for Bristol Myers Squibb. <laughs> uh, have you ever met your local congressman? Bono, very active in politics and everything. Uh, uh, Joseph from, uh, what is that? Electric Storm? Electrical, electrical Storm. Electrical Storm says no, and uh, so does Tony from uh, Unforgettable Pump Fire says no. Uh, but he did meet Chuck Schumer once at Coney Island Irish Festival. 
Every person in the New York area has met Chuck Schumer. Yeah. The I like how the, 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 everywhere. the Tony Russo U2 guy, you can see he's totally biting on his molars, trying to get his jaw to stick out a little yeah. further. <laughs> <laughs> get the, the biting on his molars. So we asked him, what, what does the World Bank do? Mm-hmm. They kind of they helps love this one. The World Bank helps countries get out of debt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, Tony said, the World Bank governs world commerce. It sets the precedent for the world economy. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good, but it's wrong. Uh, well, I, I think the, um, it's the n- first guy was a little closer. Sure. And then the Nelson Mandela was imprisoned in what country? Yeah. Uh, well, Joseph said Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> it was held by Idi Amin Dada many years ago. <laughs> and um, this other guy said, uh, just Africa. He he wanted to cover an entire continent <laughs> instead of just going for a country. Yeah, Tony didn't know it wasn't, you know, yeah. Africa's not a country. South Africa. But it's okay. You and Bonner are at, at a pub. It's your round. What are you buying? Uh, Joe said a Coke. Uh, no, actually a non-carbonated room temperature spring water. Oof. Uh, and uh, Tony says a Guinness for him and a Chardonnay for myself. Little fancy guy there. Yeah, yeah. he is quite fancy. These are fancy Bono impersonators. Everyone knows Bono drinks the Guinness. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I think you dropped the ball there. I think you should have gotten in touch with us and um, had we'll, a two we'll, you. We'll uh, we'll do it next year. In there. We'll do it right next year. All right. What else is in the magazine there, Jim? So we got uh, the, on actually on the next page is a story we're very proud of. Uh, TV bitch boys. <laughs> bitch boys. This is pretty funny, actually. Always there when you need them. Always there when you don't. Yeah, these are uh, what like pussies. I, I don't know exactly. You know, I. Uh, yeah, these are TV pussies. They're yeah, they're, they're sort guys, of the guys that were always there. You know, always there, but not as the man in yeah. the scene. Yeah, maybe gay, maybe not. You know, yeah. you don't know exactly. <laughs> maybe gay, maybe not. Let oh, me look. We know. Uh, <laughs> we know. No, 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 not Rusty from uh, the People's Court. Okay, well, no, Rusty was all man. He, no, he was definitely all man. How does he fit in as a bitch what, boy? Why is David on there? David Spade. David Spade and Finch? just shoot me. He's a total bitch. He was the. Yeah. Uh, you like David s- Spade? Oh, I used to. You, you on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> as like a, a was it a, a kind of a, a no, sexual it thing? No, it was just a, he was a, he made me laugh thing, not a sexual thing. Uh, and Jim she J. Bullock oh, didn't. He, no, Monroe. Monroe, come on, Monroe's like. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm seeing oh, um, Skippy from Family Ties. Was it any Moreau? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Skippy, right. yeah. Any traction there? No. Moreau, um, it yeah. looks just like George Michael to me. <laughs> I can see a that. little bit he without like as much with, stubble. Yeah, he's shaven. Yeah. Got okay, George Michael adopted. In, in the wham, the, they're in the, the wham years. He was in yeah. the early years, exactly. And then the black guy from Designing Women, who was a real bitch. Right. Did he have any friends that were guys that no. ever came over? He was the only man on the show, wasn't he? Or uh, Don Knotts. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Furley on Three's Company. What a fabulous character that was to watch. Didn't get annoying or old or anything. <laughs> 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 you read yes. the uh, Skip me. Read what it says over uh, the designing women. Uh, as something funny, read that. Was that supposed to be funny? Is that su- is that supposed to be funny? Thank God, Delta Burke that. only knew how much he wanted her. No. Uh, uh, is is that like, because? Come on, man. There's sex involved. <laughs> is that it's because? Gotta, oh man, you guys are fun. killing me. Is that because it's a black guy today. though, and and Delta Burke had a big <laughs> no, ass? No, I don't know. I don't know. Because that's know. the only hey. conclusion I'm drawing man, from that. Alive. Yeah, it's a rough room, man. <laughs> it's a very rough <laughs> room. Next page. Room. Right, the next page we Demone, went through. Demone, great interview yeah. with Demone. You can't, we love you can't it. go bad with Demone. No, it was Demone. a great interview. We had him on the phone. Yeah. Demone a little disappointing on the phone. Was he? Yeah. yeah he kinda, He's not bitter. Yeah, yeah, no, not at all. I, I was hoping for more Demone, and we got uh, Robert Romanus. We got this guy named Robert Romanus on the phone. We got school teacher. I actually and read this, man. That was supposed to be, he actually did full frontal nudity. Yeah, in that scene mm-hmm. in Fast Times at Richmond High, and they had to get rid of either that or the the carrot blowjob scene. Yeah, and they opted to keep the carrot scene and throw out. I his, think uh, that's what made it a classic. Movie. Thank they, God they, they did fucked that. that decision up. Oh, would have been awful. Straight to video. <laughs> Damone, hey Stacy, love the Damone character. Now you but got on the, the phone, attitude. Not, not so good. The, the attitude. So in, in isn't this great? <laughs> 
And then you, uh, we look at the cast of uh, Alf. The cast of Alf. And What's the father turned there? out to be a real fuck. Yeah, up. what happened he with did, the father? He's a he's a crack addict and gay porn actor. <laughs> That's what he's doing now? Yeah. Wow. A porn actor? He was old then. Gay porn. Gay porn. Okay. Gay yeah. porn. <laughs> I don't watch gay porn, so. No, it's, I mean, this is, look, this is this is how it's reported, you know, making gay porn while smoking crack at the same time, so. Well, of course. He's got to no other I think way everyone to, else is doing okay. There's no but, other uh, way to do gay porn. Willie Tanner's had <laughs> You'd have to be under some, some sort of tr- God <laughs> damn. There's a lot of pole smoking. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Didi. Appreciate I it. I like the poll thing. All right, thank you. We yes, got, she uh, likes the poll. The other feature I think you'd like is um, we got the entire cast of, pretty much the entire cast, 19 actors from The Big Lebowski uh, to talk to us about their experience on the set and, you know, how they had all had a lot of fun making this movie. This movie has, like, gone cult crazy. Yeah. It's amazing the amount yeah. of mail we got from this thing. You guys not fans? No, no. I haven't I, seen it in a while. I gotta, I gotta watch that again. No, I love that movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's Why do you think it's become a, a cult film? Man, it's hard to say with these things. I think it's a lot of it is the dude, is the Jeff Bridges character. That guy's right. an amazing actor. You know, I mean, just he gets sort of he's sort of underrated. I think um, he just has great lines. Just every line is just quotable. So just guys get together and just quote it. it makes good Anything movie. specific yeah. from the movie that you can remember? Uh, we got the whole, yeah, got the whole thing about, you <laughs> He's know, just dancing uh, around. According yeah, to the, you know, Big Lebowski great alumni. Actor, great lines. Huh. He yeah. said them and they were, they were, they were great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it sounded like George, like George Bush. <laughs> oh, man. Sending, we're sending supplies and cash. Oh, yeah. And also you do a whole thing on the 25 scariest DVDs ever. Yes. And, you know, the Halloween season is upon it's us. It's your so. agenda for Halloween night. So this is uh, perfect. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, they're scary and there's Should night. we give away number one so no one has to buy the magazine? Or <laughs> or that would be a bad Gee. thing, right? No, no, no. Let's tell them. Let's tell them. I mean, do you guys agree with these? That we, Texas huh. Chainsaw Massacre, number the, one. The original? Mm-hmm. The original I don't know. Texas Not the Chainsaw Michael Bay Massacre, remake. The mm. scariest movie of all time? Mm-hmm. I don't. S- no, no. The, you know, there's a difference between uh, blood and guts kind of movie and scary. Yeah, mm-hmm. I could be scared. I'll give you the definition of scary movie. Uh, the Ring. Yep. Yeah. Creepy shit freaked me out. You're not seeing any blood and guts in that movie, but th- just the creepiest visual things in there. Yeah. Did the Ring make the list? Did the ring make the list, my friend? If it didn't, you will have to leave. You're gonna have, you're gonna have to go back to the lab. Because that... Here's why the ring didn't make it. Not oh, old enough? Uh-oh. No, no, no. We did three issues before we did uh, Asian horror, a whole Asian horror roundup, and it was number one. So we just done. We just did a huge Asian thing Asian horror it. roundup? How did yeah. Phantasm get in at 20? Is that the one with the little sphere that would yeah. fly and yeah. the screw the, would come up? It's the little orb with the, with the pitchfork in the front. And yeah. The Shining is 17? The yeah. Shining is 17? See, you're a, psych- you're a psychological guy. Like, you need the, you know, that's, for you, horror is psychological. Like, the you know, sh- gore. Those little twin gore girls too, flashing in the, in the picture? I know. Dude. Horrifying. That's more scary out. than the birds, my friend. Yeah. Birds yeah. pretty creepy. Birds um, creepy. Uh, but but the Shining was scarier than The Fly, which you got at number seven. Night of the Living Dead, very good. Yeah, yeah. Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. That's that, a great that one. Was scary. The one I want to, I want to like, my favorite of all of these is actually 15, is The Cube. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. I like The Cube. Phenomenal movie. Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. That was more, yeah, more your speed. My speed, too. Yeah, I'm not so into The like photo shoot afterwards is yeah. great. The Lost Girl. Because they put her in sexy clothes, but you can tell she's completely uncomfortable in every photo. <laughs> yeah, so they just dress her up. Her. They dress her up in the hacky sexual show. Okay, fishnet, thigh highs. This is like a bra photo- showing. Photographic rape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's got a look on her face like my parents are going to kill me. She doesn't want to be showing so much skin. Oh, man. She's huddled Bill, in the I need, fe- I need you, I need you in an editing. I need you in the editing room with us on these uh, with these pictures. You or maybe maybe at the you shoot. You can't tell me that that's not good input. I mean, it's a little late now, so you got to go with it and be like, no, she was totally comfortable Yeah, holding her knees up to her bosom. Yeah, in the wicker chair. Wow, we got it the... It left marks. We got the story of Alf being caught in Crack House. Oh, yeah? Oh, man, it's going to be tough to read because the, le- the left side is cut off. Mild-mannered Alf star Max Wright has been caught on camera smoking crack and making gay porn. <laughs> and some of the most shocking celebrity news photos ever obtained by the Inquirer. Scenes from a porn video show Max with two naked men inhaling crack from a makeshift 
makeshift pipe, fondling one of the men and then having sex with the other. Oh. His life was so out of control that he didn't care about exposure to AIDS, said a former gay lover of the 57-year-old actor who is now co-starring on the ABC comedy Norm. What? We would meet twice a week and pick up homeless men, take them home, and pay them $100 for sex. <laughs> oh. Wow. Max had unprotected sex with me and with the homeless guys, and he did drugs with me and the homeless men. Max even agreed to let me film two gay sex videos with him. Oh, shoot. What did I just do? Thank you. Uh, with, uh, okay. They're both... They're both with homeless guys we picked up on the street. The ex-lover said he had a two-year gay relationship with Wright, who has been married for about 35 years. And it goes on and on. Who would think the puppet would have the best career, like, 15 years later, whatever it's been? The fucking puppet is the one that's actually doing the the best out of the the whole cast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just an observation. Very good. (laughs) All right, so we got Jamie hanging out. uh, Giant Magazine. We really do like the magazine. We beat you guys up a lot. I know. I love uh, it, though. But I, uh, I, I, and they got Bill to bust my ass as well. I love it. I get every issue. I think it's a. I, yeah, a, I read this thing on the way to uh, Seattle. Yeah, and all Michael the look Rappaport, the, very dangerous look on his face. Yeah, he's a dangerous he's guy. Got some stubble. We got David Spade for you on the page before. It's sort of the David Spade issue. Mm. Hollywood minute with. Well, as we all are. thumb through. He yeah. is so uncomfortable. Uh, Dee Dee, you got a new radio show? You're, you're pitching XM. Yeah. What is it called? We're, yeah. trying to, we're trying to get a golden <laughs> ticket. You're Lady. trying to get a golden ticket? Yes. And what's the name of the show? Two Chicks and a Dick. Now, I'm assuming that's a play on words. It's not just going to be you two. <laughs> as my mic falls. It's not just going to be you two and a cock. Correct. Like, like, and, and things going on. You Unless, of course, that would be like a rooster in this studio, which would be funny. Two Chicks and a Cock. And then you talk. Hi, it's my chicken. You know. No. Two no? chicks and a double dong would work. There you go. Yeah, but it's double two dong. chicks and a dick. Who's the dick? Well, we have a contest for that. You want to find uh, a search dick. Search of the perfect dick. For I your get listeners, it. You and know? you never really they find one. It's just your two, uh, you two doing a show, and then the gag is you're looking for dick. No, we're going to find one. We're going to pick one. Find it's it. not like you're looking for your news girl. I'll never pick her. Um. Oh, the jig's up. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone finally realized we never really were looking for a news chick. Got to move the mic. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So you got some uh, samples you brought in? Yeah, I do. Of of what? The show? Yeah. Oh, it's you on the internet. You two actually uh, have been doing a show? Well, the co-host, she's not here. She's filming oh, girl. Oh, I thought it was Danielle. you. I thought Me too. This is, this is Danielle. She helps, too. Wait, you help in what way? But that well, means there'd be three chicks. Hey, no, well, hey, selfish, greedy girl with the mic. How oh, about you? Hi, Anthony. Sorry, Anthony hi. Like, uh, we what? met her in Washington. So why I isn't she the Anthony. third chick? No. What's your role? She I'm wasn't good chick. enough to be the third chick. <laughs> well, because the show started in 2003, actually. What, and there was a law? <laughs> no, we didn't change the name. How about changing oh. the name to two chicks plus another chick? That's actually right. Two chicks and a chick. That's good. It's kind of like Stevie Ray Vaughan in Double Trouble when they added the keyboardist. And they <laughs> yeah, now it's said Double Trouble. Not just Double. But you guys yeah. are the Opie and Anthony show, and Jim Norton's always here, but he's not in the title. In your face. Because he's not here enough to be in the in title. In your That's face. A good point. But he's not here enough to be in the title. But he was. He's a big star in Hollywood. He mm-hmm. certainly is. And we knew it the whole time. That's why we never put his name in the title. <laughs> <laughs> we knew he was leaving us eventually. He's coming back, isn't he? So, Dee Dee, you're a permanent fixture, though, on the show? I just want to start the rumor. Okay. <laughs> Watch the board now. I permanent am. fixture. So, Dee Dee, and what it, what, what, how would you describe, how would you pitch this show? I need, I need a quick couple of sentences, a paragraph on, on what this show is about. It's Love Line meets Wild On. There you go. Love Line, which is like the, you know, sex talk thing. Hi, you call in. Hi, I'm having trouble. Blah, blah, blah. Meets Wild On, which is Paradise without Tara Reid. It's with Brooke Burke. Right, Brooke Burke. Very good. So, I don't. How do those mix? Do you go places? Actually, yes. You go places, and you talk about sex when you're out at a bar. We talk about numerous topics. They don't go places. Go places. They go places with their show, right? Right. 
What do you mean? Thank you. You said you go places, and she said yes, meaning she'll go down some roads and some different topics. Oh, she you doesn't actually leave the no. premises? When she when she said yes so to So how is it like Wild places, On? It's you know? nothing like Wild no, On. No, we do. I'll let you Your show okay. stinks. No, it doesn't. We do. Yeah. No, we'll be, it's like, like Love we'll Line. Shows that, it's like, like Love on. Line meets a show that stinks. You right. know what? It is so refreshing to be on this side of the pitch <laughs> All right, let's of listen. a bad pitch. Now we know exactly what they felt I'm like sorry. at A&E. So, how, so how's okay, the like weather there's, outside? There's like a place, like, for instance, using this as an example. Uh, for an instance. Here we go. In Orlando, there's a place called Fervilla. And I don't know if you know what Up that is. Up until uh, Friday, and then it's going to be <laughs> flooded and uh, washed well, whatever. away. Whatever. So, I know. There's no place for Fervilla in Orlando. For Fervilla? Fervilla. Yeah. No, there isn't. Fervilla. Okay, whatever. I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> there isn't. Sorry. Fervilla? It's a porn store about the size of a Walmart. Oh, a Walmart sized porn store that in Orlando. True. It I'm isn't? From Orlando. And Are it isn't. From Orlando? Yeah, there's no Me store. Too. There's no store down there. There's certainly No, there isn't. We're not going online. Okay, anyway. Bill says you're lying. So, like, we'll go to different places, like, example, like, there. And Total bullshit. Do our show from there. And, you know, if it's sex that comes up, fine, we'll talk about that. Like, yeah. Okay. Fucking making up stuff about my hometown. I'm sitting here just scratching my head trying to figure out where you're getting Go this to shit. the internet and No, we're Google not going it. to the internet. Fair Villa? <laughs> yes. Who the hell would have a Walmart-sized porn store? I mean, In the same just, place that uh, has Disney World. Disney World. That doesn't even make guys. sense. Yeah, you doesn't. must not know your hometown. My very people well. from Orlando call in and back me up. O Town is store uh, does not fucking like exist. O Town. O Town. Can we? You want to? You want to listen to some audio? All right, sure. let's hear you some want, of the. So show. this is the intro of the show. Yeah. All right. Guys' fantasies involve two chicks. Every guy in the world, it's that simple. What's better than two chicks? Three chicks. Mm, that's hot. What do you think, Dee Dee? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're retarded. Gosh, it's not your mom's radio show. It's two chicks and a dick. But it's kind of cute. Yeah, that's right. But it has three chicks. <laughs> it even says it oh, in the intro. Oh. And no dick. And no dick. We are, no, there's... Uh, we're very confused. Two chicks and a dick has three chicks, no dick. <laughs> there is a dick. There is a dick. That is the most confusing <laughs> title for... Get even, it. Okay. Even 2000? your production guy said three chicks. How about okay. two chicks no. and a hermaphrodite? <laughs> right. That would even be closer. At least, yes, yeah, start. Uh, it's a good start. Okay, see, there's a They dick. just make up shit. We have a <laughs> yeah. porn store in Orlando. There is. And there is, isn't. Yes, there is. Bullshit. Go on the internet. Where'd you We're not in going Orlando? on the internet. Where'd you grow up in Orlando? I was like right down the street from Disneyland. <laughs> what a liar. What, what's the county that's it's everyone fucking, knows. I grew up on Main Street, on Main street right Street-Orlando. off of Elm. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows. He's said it many times. I'm Mrs. Show. Fucking Robinson, my second grade teacher. He's from Winter Park. <laughs> that's because somebody you are related to lives there. Damn it! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Anyway, if you Google They're it, it is They're too smart, Anthony. Jesus. They're too smart. All right, go so ahead, Dee Dee. The dick, you know, Rick, his real name was Rick. Rick. He decided to move on, so we're now searching for the perfect dick. Right. We're How about three chicks get, uh, searching for dick? <laughs> ah. Ah, oh, very good. There nice you go. Hey, see? But then we have to change our logo. And our, and our website. Open up, our website. So you just go with a line. Yeah. Further. Well, we already we do have a dick. He's the roaming dick right now. So instead of changing the logo and stuff, you just leave the logo that doesn't apply to the show at all. Why didn't who who came on after well, Seinfeld we went money off the air? First. Wouldn't that be good if they just left Seinfeld? Let's call the show Seinfeld yeah. and leave the logo on just so it's easy and convenient. Yeah. We need money first to do all the changes. money. We ain't giving what you do money. What do you need money for? What is this, an investment opportunity? What are you, what are you, the Amway of radio? <laughs> You're coming to us for money? What is this? What do you need money for? We're all just friends and you came in to say hi. <laughs> this is your way of asking for money? <laughs> no. What do you need money but there's for? A lot. That costs a lot to change. And all right. We got a, Trust uh, me, listen to the audio. All right, we have another sam- uh, sample. Just Photoshop. What, what is this? Go to work, Peg. Don't fucking whip up a logo in no time. You, you guys are talking like about it. bald men, Puerto Ooh. Ricans with big dicks. And Hootie from Hootie. And the blowfish. All in one. Wow, yeah. look at you guys. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I got to talk about Michael wrong, Jackson. Wrong track. Uh, Michael Jackson. Uh, M- Michael wrong Jackson. Wrong track, Opie. Oh, I'm sorry. Opie. That's the other chick. What? That's the other she's, chick. She's the co-host. That's not Is she part today. of the chick thing? Yes. That's and we can call chick. her and get her on the phone. She's doing her show, so on another. What, what show does she can't do? can't say right now because she works for a terrestrial radio. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Which is why I'm here. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh-huh. you're part of the show. Absolutely. But not as 
big a part as Dee Dee and the girl that's on Terrestrial? It hurts my feelings. But no, yeah. I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, all right. She's learning. She's learning. She's kind of like Anthony when he came into the network. Anthony never had to learn. <laughs> I he know. He just had it. Well, there's a poll up already on <laughs> WACPAC. Oh, uh, should Dee Dee receive a golden ticket? Uh, 75% of the vote is no. And 25% is uh, yes. They haven't even heard the show yet, though. I think you should hear the show. They're already voting. I'm going to defend them, Anthony. They haven't even heard the show yet. Oh, get thank you, Opie. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, Dee Dee. Okay, you can thank put you, it Opie. Now okay. show us your boobs. <laughs> that's uh, cleavage, and that's enough. All right. Enough. If you give me a golden ticket. Okay. She wanted to show you her mole and her boob today. You got a mole? Only if I get an audition. This is your audition. This is no, it. no, no, no. You're give living me a it. Saturday night to prove to you that we can do this. One Saturday night. You're not on anything. It's for free. You know, let me show you that. You know, you have nothing to lose but everything to gain. But there's got to be some kind of angle. Hi, listen. Like, you yeah. got to do it naked or. <laughs> I don't know. We'll talk. Um, All, right. All right, let's listen to some of uh, the show, Anthony, okay? Here All right, let's listen. Amanda! How are you? I'm fine. Where are you calling from? Oh, I'm on Route 1. You know Hootie from Hootie and the Blowfish? Yes, absolutely. Oh, boy, our listeners are going to get really mad at you, Dee Dee. Because it's left and right. It's a left and right recording. Your voice is in the right, and the caller's in the left. Just go with it. We can't. See, I'm, some people really can't. <laughs> will only hear. One side of this, yeah. and <laughs> others will hear the other, right. and some will hear, hear both. Right. But some will be very angry. Just keep going. They'll get the point. No, they won't. Oh, come on. No, Dee Dee. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Technical. Oh, come on, dude. Well, if she shows the mole, will you then play it? <laughs> Doug Fisher from Whackbag. Dee Dee's voice sounds like the chicken in the German fuck video. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that good? Did he really fuck that thing? Yes, he yes, did. Yes, he did, Dee Dee. Yes, he did. Come on, just play it. But it's 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 a mess. <laughs> Production-wise, I'm not saying you guys are a mess. But By the way, Cape uh, Fair Villa is in Cape Canaveral, not Orlando. It no, it's not. That's yes, what Mike from is. Jersey says. Mike from Jersey has never been wrong. Well, he's never been to Orlando then. All right, here we go, Anthony. Mm -hmm. They played a show when I was working at the Bayou. Okay, what's up with him doing a fucking Burger King commercial? I know. It's sad, isn't it? It is. I see him walking around in it. You know what he reminds me of? The cowboy guy on um, Pee Wee Herman. What's his name? Uh, uh, <laughs> what's his name? Who did that? Lawrence Fishburne or something? Uh -huh. Right? That is so sad. That's what he reminds me of. The cowboy, cowboy whatever from Pee Wee Herman. That's what I'm thinking when I see Hootie doing the Burger King commercial. No, and that cowboy suit with that guitar. It's, it's totally sad, but Brother Man got bills to pay, so. <laughs> I love it. Brother Man got bills to play. That's right. Oh, my God. You oh said, boy. You said <laughs> bills to play. No, you never pass over when somebody uh, says something wrong. Let's give you a little radio advice. When one of the chicks or the dick or anybody uh, messes up a word, you got to call them out on it. Well, and, keep, and just keep twisting the screws because that's five or ten minutes less radio you have to do. I like that. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, well, they didn't catch it, so move on. No, people are mad because they can only hear one side. Is that what they're saying now? Yeah. Oh, I hate that. We should have brought our audio from yesterday. You need it in mono. We need it in mono. Are you guys in town tonight? If you want to pay for my uh, ticket back, we already paid for a ticket. <laughs> we have said too. Booger King. And you also I said, said Burger King. Play you also it back. said Lawrence Fish Barn. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Another person has you saying Lawrence Fish Born. Well, anyway, can just play more. Well, this guy wants to be the dick on your show, Ken in Mississippi. Let's Ken. Hey, what's up, man? Hey. Hey, uh, I just wanted to be the first to volunteer to be the dick for uh, Dee Dee. Well, you got to convince Opie and Anthony to give us an audition. Well, uh, you know, that's what you're doing right now, sell the show. We'll That's make sure right. you be a good dick. We will give you some time on the weekend, but you you got to have an angle. Like, We're something else has to be going on besides the show. Like, you do it with a lot of, uh, I don't know, livestock in the studio with you. Or, uh, I don't know, you know, think it over. you got to make it interesting to the listeners, because, like, wow, they're trying out this new show on 202, but there's... Uh, Midgets running loose. I love it. Look at midgets. I know some. But I'm just saying, like, come up with some other weird angle where people go, can you believe they're doing this? Oh, we can do that. And then they're going to hear, like, the, I don't know, the livestock in the background, but then they're going to hear a cool show, and it's, it's, it'll all make sense. 
So come up with some kind of angle, and we'll give you a shot. If it's just you guys doing a show, ah, 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 ah. But midgets running around like losing their minds as you try to do a show. Now that's interesting. Yes, it is. And these are just quick ideas off the top of my head, but I'm sure you guys, you know, if you have a weekend to think it over, you you call us uh, and we'll figure it out. And then do we come to New York to do it, or do we? Oh do it? yeah, you do. <laughs> oh with, yeah. With midgets here in the studio? No, that was just my dumb. No, quick... we're gonna come up with but something better than midgets. Yeah, that was just a quick example. I'm not saying that's a good example, but... We'll it, come up it, with something better, believe me. It starts the creative juices in your head where you go, okay, oh, I get what they're you know, getting at here, right? Creative juices. Creative juices creative are now juices. Creative flowing. juices flowing. That's yeah, right. we'll come up with something better than midgets. We love when juices are flowing. Let's say hi to Harry in Buffalo. Harry! Does he want to be a dick? Hey, what's happening, guys? What's up, Harry? I'll be a dick on our show, too, but anyways, I want to call in a tag from Whackbag. Yeah, go ahead, Harry. Uh, um, you got uh, Bubba Bo on XM171 on the Midnight to Five show talking uh, talking smack about O and A, and they got six listeners and this and that and whack bag between all all the whack baggers. They got a collective IQ of uh, 68. Well, that's true, but yeah, well. <laughs> so, anyways, you can read to him at triple eight eight six zero eight seven eight five. All right, well, we got to hear some audio. I, you know, I don't want to take your word for it because you sound like you're a little uh, left of center. Like Tippy Tom. <laughs> right. We only got that much time left. We got. Oh. We got to thank the two chicks. Two chicks and a dick. dot com, all spelled out. Oh, all right, very good. Uh, this is an ongoing thing. And Jamie from Giant Magazine, right. thank you so much for thank, stopping thanks by. Thanks for having me. We love Giant Magazine. Great. Go pick it up on uh, newsstands. Billbird. dot com. Go. He's going on a tour. Billbird. dot com. Yeah. 